Sit back and relax while you listen to Train Kickers Podcast. I'm Dave, and along with my co-host Dan and Steve, we're going to take you all around the world of miniature wargaming. On tonight's episode, we are going to finish up our deep dive discussion slash tiering of the various Primarchs or Primarch-like units. We're going to see that we have four um, legitimate Primarchs left. Then we have some special ones that we're throwing in as well, um, including Valdor, Korea, and then we will talk about the um, corrupted Fulgrim as well. Um... Yeah, I don't think I have anything else particular thing here at the opening. We'll get to this, and we'll talk about any of that there at the end. So now, on to the show. All right, uh, Dan, you're gonna you paint the whole time. You're gonna pay attention, huh? What no, no, I'm paying attention. Yeah, painting paying attention. Painting is not paying attention. Shh, I can do both. I'm, I'm no, you can't. You don't do it that way. <laughs> All right. Are we ready for lower garb? That yeah, the, uh... I think we are. So we're, we're kind of we're we're avoiding some of the longer banter because we are starting a bit late because of some various things, but we wanted to do this today so we can get out early, especially because I have some big things, including packs at the end of the week. So if I don't edit early, it ain't getting edited. <laughs> but we are starting with Lorgar as the first one, and Dan wants to talk about him. Well, I mean, it's close enough to a demon. Um, so Lorgar, 415 points, which is on the low end? Very low. Question mark? He's the cheapest. Okay. Actually, I think Valdor's the cheapest. Uh Maybe Valor. Uh, I'm, I'm looking Valor, at base Primarchs, and then we'll worry about the other ones as a special yeah, sauce out to the, the sandwich. Man. Hey, excuse me. So, 415. Um, his stat line... Okay, so stat line for a Primarch, not great. Stat line for a normal unit, great. So we're looking at Movement 8, Weapon Skill 6, Ballistic Skill 6, Strength 6, Toughness 6, 6 Wounds, 6 Initiative. There's a pattern here. 5 Attacks. I just wish they gave him an extra attack. You just, said there's a pattern as soon as the pattern I breaks. know, I know. I got to attacks. <laughs> I'm just like, there's a pattern, but it's gone now. Yeah. I mean, five attacks, six leadership 10 and a two up save. Um, yep. His war gear is all um, uh, specialized, so we'll go to that later. He does have it will not die four up, which is better than most. He does have Crusader, and then of course he's got special rules, the Fortress of Word, Power of the Word, and then his Warlord trait. He could also be upgraded for 25 points to Transfigured, so we'll go over that later. So his Warlord trait is very simple. Uh, essentially, all units compose entirely models which have the word bearer special rule and can draw a line of sight to Logar, can add one plus result to the charge distance roll made for them, and may use Logar's leadership in all leadership tests, morale checks, pinning Lorgar. tests. May, l- 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 uh, uh, Lorgar. Lorgar, as in lore. <laughs> yeah, you just keep saying Logar. Uh, Lorgar for leadership, morale, and pinning tests. Mm-hmm. And you get an extra assault phase reaction. This is pretty good. Um, Plus one to charge is always great because um, I think Galvor Backer move eight, he says, with a question mark inflection. So uh, check Galvor Backer eight, yes. Yeah, so that's plus two to the charge for them, and they definitely want to be locked in combat. Um, but it's also plus one for your slow terminators, plus one for your you know fast terminators. It's just nice. Plus one to charge. And then line of sight, they can use leadership for all leadership morale, pinning leadership 10. So you pass on all leadership 10 if you can see them. That's great. I love it. Looks great. All right, Fortress of the Word. So he knows thaumaturgy and divination from the Horse Heresy book. So to mm-hmm. kind of go over what those are real quick. Oh, I'm on the wrong section. There we are. So thermo- thaumaturgy. Thaumaturgy, sorry. Yeah. Thaumaturgy has, uh, instead of making a shoot attack, of course. Um, first of all, it's a template weapon, strength 4, AP 3, assault 1, sanctic, and psychic force. Eh. But it is, it always wounds demons on a two up, and any successful and vulnerable saves must be re rolled. So that's going to mean if you're facing demons, enjoy a two up wound and um, them re rolling uh, invulnerable saves. Um, and then I believe that yeah, he is, his general thing is in, instead of making a shooting attack, uh, a psycho with the psychic power may select a single friendly unit with at least one model within 12 inches and make a psychic check. If it's passed, then all non vehicle models may. Uh, Roll a d6 on a five up, a model regains a single lost wound. Yeah. Um, heal. That one's kind of weird to me because you can't spread wounds anymore. Like if Galvorak could spread wounds because there are multiple wounds, this would be a nightmare. <laughs> oh no, you've wounded me 10 times. I get all my 10 wounds back. But eh, it's still nice, I guess. Maybe maybe if the unit has, I don't know, like any time a unit, can you spread wounds if, if they have character? If they're character, yes. Yeah. So maybe one of his units out there. The, the, it's the weird one. There is today. ways to do it, but it's very yeah. tough in this edition. Yeah, I was gonna say it, it's that one's weird. What was the other one? I can't even remember. It was oh, with the other one, he gets divination. Yeah, 
divination there. Yep. So divination, um, instead of making a shoot, oh, this is a long one, but essentially instead of making a shooting attack, you uh, select a single friend unit within 12 inches. You get precision strike six up and precision shot six up. Mm. However, if you take a psychic check, it becomes precision strikes five up and precision so- shots five up. Yeah. Um, and if it's failed, nothing happens. That's that's great. That I like. Yeah, you Excellent. Get shots. Yeah. Um, and then the the um, actual shooting attack is 18 inches. Strength six, AP two. So remember, he can choose what he shoots. Assault once. Oh, it's sniper anyway. <laughs> uh, guided fire and psychic focus. I like the fact that it's sniper and it's on Lorgar. So I would probably like divination, to be quite honest. Um, remember, Tanji's like, eh. Power of the word. Uh, any Legion Command Squad, Legion Cataphracti Command Squad, or Legion Terminator Tartaros Command Squad um, with uh, Lorgar as its leader of a retinue, they all gain fearless and feel no pain for up. <laughs> Once per battle, one friendly unit composed entirely models with the infantry or cavalry unit um, with at least one model within 18 inches may be selected at the start of the game term, and that chosen unit gains the fearless and feel no pain for plus special rule for the duration of that game turn. That's really, really good. I yep. can't think of anything that's sadly is not. Do, does Lorgar usually go with Galvor? No, Galvor or something different. Um, now, in general, really yeah. Um, keep in mind when you have corrupted. If he's not corrupted currently, he wouldn't be allowed to go with them anyway. Which he does get corrupted later, but we'll see if that does. But anyway, yes. that's just amazing. You put him in a stupid cataphracti squad. Now they all have feel no pain four up. That's um, that's a <laughs> that's gross. Two up, four up, and then four up is um, yikes and fearless here's a stupid question if the squad yeah. is fearless and he is fearless but he gets to react because he's a primark but the squad can't do can they react why wouldn't you you mean like the, the squad? Oh, sorry not react uh shroud the shroud rule because you know how primarchs can shroud even though they're fearless does that confer to the actual unit the, the squad would block it i'm gonna say I'm going to go with that, too. I'm too lazy to look it up, but if someone wants to lazy it up. I'll, I'll put it this Arbor- way. He's a Primark. Yeah. If he's choosing it, he should probably just be allowed to do it anyway. Right, exactly. It's that simple. Because that's the thing with, with Cor- Corax. Yeah. Um, he, he, he's the- part of the unit. Yeah. Let him do it. So, Armor of the Word. He's got a two-up, four-up, uh, two-up save, four-up and vulnerable save. And it increases the three-up if you're getting hit with force or psychic focus um, or perils of the warp. Okay, so that's neat. Um, he's got a pistol. Which actually looks effective. Yes. It's strength eight, range twelve, strength eight, AP two, concussive two, graviton pulse, haywire, and mastercrafted. Um, actually not bad. I mean, hell, even concussive two. If you fail a leadership check, that's that negative two weapon skill. Um, haywire is great for just plinking off a hole point. So honestly, not a bad pistol. Um, I would shoot it. And then Illuminarium. It's going to be a second. Is it special? It is not. So with the pistol. Oh, is it two-handed? Actually, second. It is, it is not two-handed. Huh. So he does have an extra attack. So here's the yep. fun fact, Dave. He does have six attacks. Because he, he's got he a pistol. He gets to it at the end, yes. Yeah. Because a pistol and a... And and a so he has weapon, Illuminarium. Yeah. Kind of annoys me it's not Illuminarium. But whatever. Illuminarium. Uh, it is a power weapon. It's basically his ginormous mace. It is strength plus two, so he's strength eight, AP two, melee, master crafted, armor bane, and brutal two. That's actually a pretty damn good it's one weapon. of the better weapons. Yeah. Yes, it actually is a very not very unwieldy, strong weapon. not unwieldy, yeah. brutal two. It's a it's a it's a at initiative thunder hammer. That's a master crafted thunder hammer. Yes, with armor bane. Yeah, That's so, a. I, I mean, overall, he actually has a great weapon. Even just again, like he might struggle versus primarchs to an extent. Because like his worst weapon skill and stuff like that, yeah. but he actually is a very good fighter. Which is funny because he can kind of buff himself with his psychic powers, right? But well, he buffs the unit. He doesn't need the buff. He bu- yeah, he's he a primark. He calls his yeah, shots he's all the time. On fives. He's also hitting on fives with primarks, but if he hits, it's still brutal too. Yeah, which is, else is he has, he has the same sort issue. of he has the same sort of problem that we said Ferris Man has had is that. The weapon is quite good, but where his stats were means if he's fighting someone who's a bit better, yeah. he'll get good wounds, but he's got to get to that point first. Exactly. So. Now, before I go to lower guard transfigured, I do yeah. want to yeah, discuss him fully, and then we'll talk about transfigured, because yeah. that's a big difference. I don't actually mind him. I think he's either a solid B, possibly even an A. Like his Warlord trait, first of all, feel, uh, it will not die for up is actually pretty great. Um 
His War Lord trait's really fantastic for his army. Plus one again, plus one charge distance, and uh, basically you'll see him all the time because he's huge. Uh, using his leadership 10 for pretty much all checks is great, and they want extra assault phase reactions because they want to get in combat or close, so that's great. His weapon, while not great against other Primarchs, will absolutely crush. Let's say the Primarch issues a challenge for the Sergeant in, and then he yeah. crushes literally everything else. Like he he will like wreck cleave through a squad of terminators. Um because he's striking big for them anyway. So I mean yes. he's hitting on what threes, mastercrafted. So he's gonna get those what five uh five hits. Oh sorry. Yeah, five hits with the mastercrafted. It's yeah. possibly five to four wounds. That's that's about four dead terminators. Could be, yeah. You're down to invul saves, but then hey, if I'm making your roll dice, you're saves. gonna fail. Yeah, yes. it's two. It's two yeah. invulsives. Two per, so only about twenty five percent chance if you have the four up invul yeah. that you're going to make. So it. four to three die. That's at initiative six. That's pretty damn good. Yes. He also buffs his own cataphract dice squad with a four field of pain. So I mean, if they're not getting hit with power fists, ew. um, I think he's a B or an A. No, and with the second powers, I say an A. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with A. I he, he's good. All right. So, so I mean, so we also want to talk a bit about the army choice. So. Who he goes yeah, with go is somewhat prescribed here because his ability, that four up feeling of pain, doesn't help you if you don't take the essentially command squad, the, the, like he says. Yeah. So you're going to want to. Um, but like I said, the way he is right now, he couldn't go with some of the other units you might want anyway, unless he gets um, corrupted. He couldn't go with like Galverbach or anything like that. But even if you look at it, like uh, I was looking at Galverbach here, um, their leadership nine, they don't have. Um, stubborn or anything like that and you might not care so much about the extra feeling of pain because they're already on a five up but getting extra leadership for even that sort of unit is great um ash and circle are at least stubborn but you can go to 10 that's another unit where crusader you know this is Jesus. an army that actually does want to like get into fight um when you give and another unit stubborn. is there a restriction on they have to be infantry or cavalry okay uh, but like your Ash and Circle could get it because they have no feel no pain whatsoever, so that could really help them a lot. Um, I Steve, like what overall. do you think? No, I think he's actually okay, exceedingly so, strong. Yeah, the power of the word is only going to work in the big point games because command squads and retinues in general count as Lord of War points. Yes, they do. Oh, that's right. With the newest yeah. FAQ. So a cheap command squad is still like what? Like um probably two hundred. What's five cataphracti? Okay, cataphracti are just under two hundred. Tartaros is like one fifty. And a generic one is like you know, sorry, those are normal squads, not command squads. Command squads are eighty five points for a basic legion command squad. But but even so if that's you for took, three guys. But even if you took the cataphracti and let's call them two hundred, they might even be that, but let's say it's two hundred. 125 for three base cataphracty. Yeah, okay. So there, you're not even at 600 points. That's still a 3,000 point game. You can take that. Yeah. Because he's cheap. True. That's the thing. He's 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 pretty cheap. You can't quite fit this it in like true. a 2K game, but you can even fit it in probably like a 2,500 or 2,400 point game, depending on exactly how you, how you do it. If you really tried, yeah. No, that's true. That is true. So, the, so maybe it is maybe that is useful because feel no pain is a really nice rule to have. Um, it's, it's not even five up, it's four up, which is ugh. yeah. The big he, thing is he like, will punch down exceptionally well. Yes. Um part of their legion trait isn't as useful with him because they never count their leaderships below six, which is something if you're like really losing a combat, but him making you a ten for anyone who sees him, hopefully it's not going that bad. Um but I mean, this is this is a faction that rules wise they want to get into combat. That's how they're spreading the word to you, and he greatly helps his army do that. Um, Dan, what happens if he gets all transfigured right. and crazy? If he gets all transfigured, and I don't. So real quick, I don't know what he is in forty k. I think he was trying to be a demon prince, but the the chaos gods rejected him. I, I wish that sounds about I looked right. it up. It, I, he, I know he's stuck in his palace because he keeps hearing crows because Korax is coming for him. But um, anyway, if he becomes corrupted, essentially, low guard transferred, it's only, what, 25 points again? Yeah, 25 is cheap. Yeah, so it's nothing. It's literally nothing. 
Uh, if Logar is upgraded to the special rule, he gains a corrupted unit subtype, so now he can join Galvor back. Doesn't give him four plus, but you know. He replaces Thaumaturgy and Divination with the Anethma and Diab uh, and et it's not even Anethma, which is anathemata. Anathemata. It's not a fucking word. Anathemata and Diabolism. So yes. let's see what the Anathemata and uh, Diabolism do. Let me see here. Wait, do I not have no? I have to have. Oh, there it is. It's at the very I have Diab di Diabolism. Oh, here it is. I, it's under that. So Anathemata. First, you have Seal. Oh, no, I remember this. So talk about it rather than reading yeah. full paragraphs. No, no, no. It's not that. I remember this because I was talking about this with a person who was like, how do I beat demons? And Sean mentioned this. So uh, instead of making a shoot attack, a psycho with a second power may make, select a single enemy unit composed entirely models with the demon unit type or corrupted unit subtype that is within line of sight and has at least one model within 18 inches of the psycho. So it's 18 inch range, essentially. All models in the target unit must reduce their strength and toughness by one to a minimum of one until the end of the target unit controlling next turn. And the controlling player of the psychic psyker may uh, use his power, may then choose to make a psychic check. If that check is passed, the target unit also just suffers the perils of the warp. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a spicy power if you're if you know demons are on the table. And then breach the veil. And instead of making a shooting attack. Um, he may select uh, a psycho with the same arm, may select a point within 12 inches and at least three inches away from enemy models of terrain. And you place a three inch blast marker towards in a warp rift. So that controlling player may then choose to make a psychic check for the yes, for the esoterist. If the check has failed, wait, for the esoterist, he could eat, yeah, he could do this. Oh, this is the esoterist special rule where essentially, um, if the check has failed or not taken, the chosen point is scattered, uh, for normal is scattered. If it scatters into a passable terrain, or within three inches of an enemy model, we're off the edge of the battlefield, and the esoteric suffers the perils of the warp, and the chosen point is moved a minimum distance required in the direction of the controlling player's choice to place it clear of all the models I said. If the check is passed, the warp rift does not scatter. Once the final location of the chosen point is determined, you may choose to deploy up to one of the Runestorm Demon units in reserve onto the battlefield. We'll talk about that in a second. That player may choose to place no units if they wish. That unit then moves into the battlefield from any point along the edge of the blast marker, representing the warp rift as an entry play from reserves, treating the warp rift as though it was controlling player's battlefield edge. So, short, you, uh, you place <clears throat> a warp rift within 12 inches. You then take a check. Uh, if you pass, then you can use it to essentially poop warp demons out. If you fail, it then scatters, and if it touches something, you take a barrels of the warp. Um... Oh, yeah. Uh, once models in the moon have moved on the battlefield, the Warp Rift Barker is removed from play. Um, the demon brought into play may be targeted by Interceptor um, and it may declare a charge. Okay. that's So basically, you can summon in demons. On top of that, he has Void Darts as a shooting attack, which is 18 inches, Strength 5, AP 4, Assault 12, Sync Tick, Deflagrate, and Psychic Focus. Okay. Well, that's, again, pretty damn good. Um, but he also has diabolism. Now I know what diabolism is. Um, if I so need, bad. if no, I fuck. need to pause it, pause it. But just tell us. No, what no, it no. Does. It's not that. It's just so Don't. bad. Yeah. So diabolism has two powers. Mm -hmm. First of all, when a charge is declared for the model with this power or for the unit with the power, uh, the controller may choose to make a psychic check before any dice are determined for the charge distance of that charge. If it is successful, then the model power gains Hammer of Wrath three. And increases both their strength and toughness characteristic by one for the duration of the assault phase. If it's failed, then you um, still you get a perils of the warp. You still get plus one strength and uh, toughness. So you that's exceptionally good. Mm. I'll tell you. Let me, so say now why it's not. Power. Explain okay. why. Why it's not. It's only during the assault phase. You can't. You, or sorry, not even during the assault phase. You. It's only when you declare a charge. Okay. Meaning when you get charged or when you try to react to a charge, it's. Only during a charge, which to me is eh. What else am I using right then? Because there's no limits on powers as long as you're allowed to use I, them at the time. Because I haven't talked about demons yet, I would rather be taking... Um, but, but that's not an option they have. He and doesn't have that option. Yes, yes he does. I haven't okay. read through his whole rule yet. I just paused at the psychic powers. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is wait, the wait. other thing an anti-demon thing? Because like the game is not demon, so it doesn't matter. No, no, no. He could summon demons. Like you, So... Oh, I got in addition, an army that includes Logar Chart Circuit may fill any non-compulsory slots in its force organization chart with units from the Runestorm Demon Army list. 
So this is the only way you can actually get bound demons into the list. The only way. Yeah. These choices are paid for in points, occupy slots, obviously. They must begin battling reserve and may only enter play using Breach the Veil. So you can take Diabolism, which is a good power, or you can kind of fit in demons into the non-compulsory slots of the fourth organization. So he can literally poop out 18 inches an archdemon. Or he can poop out a sovereign. Or let's say you get charged. He now poops out oh, nine no. brutes. Go ahead. I just want to check one thing. Go ahead. Are, or he are can you poop out sure that that PDF is the Ruin Storm Demon Army list? Yes, because it doesn't say bound or unbound. And not, now, and not Demons of the Ruin Storm? Yeah, Ruin Storm no Demon way. list to me would be Demons of the Ruin Storm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the normal. That's there not is the bound. No Ruin Storm Demon list. There's bound and there's unbound. Now the problem is, I don't know if there's a fact about this. So if someone wants to check that, I don't know if they ever fact the fact that he can only do bound or only do unbound. But even if he's only limited to bound, David, he Steve, wouldn't be. So think about it this but way. Just in case. No, no. Here, here's why it's very simple. Bound wasn't yeah. a thing. They decided on bound because they took forever to put out demons. Okay. Yeah. It's more because demons can't ally, but this is not an ally rule. That that no, be this my counter. Ally, yeah. Exactly. So now at 18 inches, he's pooping out an archdemon Lord of War. Or if you can't fit the Lord of War because he's a Lord of War himself, you poop out a sovereign. Or let's say you get charged. Oh no, you're charging me with your fire drakes. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to now react as an Overwatch and now put in front of the unit you're trying to charge nine brutes. Now you can't charge me. Yeah. I still so it's, get though why you think the other power is bad because it's, it's when you're charging. They're bad. two different things. Okay, let me rephrase. It's not that it's bad. It's compared to thermometer. Oh, something. It's compared to anathemata. But you get does, both. Wait, you get both. I yes. thought it was or. No. Oh, you get both. Oh. God, oh, this Lord. is I why we pause ahead of time so we can read things. No, yeah, I literally thought it was both. or because give me no, a second. No, it's here. not or. It's and. Oh, I thought thermometer no. definition with or as well. No, Whoops. you 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 so. You, re you either have Thaumaturgy and Divination, yeah. or if you become corrupted, instead, you get Anathemata and Diabolism. I retract my statement. This is amazing. I, I would still only really do Thaumaturgy. Oh, no, but you could do um, you could do Diabolism in the Assault phase. Yes. Uh, Anathemata shoot. Oh, that's so gross. Yes. Ew, for 25 points. Yes. This is disgusting. Now, the difference oh, here God. for him, so, so his, his downside to this is that he gains corrupted, but he doesn't give out corrupted. Is there a way to give those? You I feel like uh, you, you need something that way? gives corrupted. We've seen it before. Yeah, but you need to have an ability that hands it out. So if you look at the I'm going corrupted, and you have burning lore for your characters. I'm trying to see if there's a way to purchase have... corrupted for your unit. Uh, that's. Traders, dark channeling, dark channeling, right? Wait a second, infantry points are not unit. yes. Twenty five points for the unit. So you, yeah. there we are. Well, yeah. So the big thing with this is, if you're going to do it that way, you have to start buying it on units or put them with a unit that's already corrupted, like Alpha. It, so it'd be a so basically something you have to be aware of. Tax. It's a fifty point tax. You twenty five points for him, and then technically, if you want the cataphracti unit with a four plus field of pain, twenty five points for the unit. Yes. So it's a fifty point tax. So. Still, it's okay. That's 465. <laughs> yes. Like, it's nothing. Um, I dare say that. Oh, wow. I see Transfigured as an S tier. I, well, so he's one character. S he only goes in one spot. a little aggressive. Uh, um, I honestly, for the summoning of the D, I didn't know he could take both. Yes. Taking one, he was already top of A. The fact that he can not only, oh, I'm playing the Demon Army. Congratulations. I'm going to burn you off the field and then i took demons i'm going to literally pop out a sovereign one of the scariest things in the game or nine brutes not even brutes okay let's brutes are elites right let's say you're charging me i'm just going to put 10 lesser demons right in front of you like you're not charging me it's such a great it, this is such a great utility rule it's disgusting there's so many stupid things you can do with this in my opinion can you you can overwatch with blast right 
he says Dan, with a question mark. Dan, this conversation again. I know. I, uh, I'm going you know what to it is? tattoo it's it onto your forehead. Stupid question. You were able to do that la- last edition or no? That, you were no, right? not able to. Got that's why I keep getting confused. Last edition. Okay. That's but why I keep getting you, confused. You had this edition used your grab guns in Overwatch and complained, oh my God. I have 20 grab guns in this squad. This takes I so know. long. I haven't like, played them in so long. It's not it's, difficult. You just put it's P- two in a squad. Yeah. <laughs> Instead it's of 20. It's PTSD. I it's it. no, I'm, I'm saying S. I'm saying S. I hate to be that aggressive, but I'm saying S for the sheer fact for 25 points, 50 technically because you want the retinue. You're getting all this. That's insane. Absolutely. He insane. is a second rate duelist. With a third rate deck, but he's as long as he's not fighting people on his level. You know who he is? He's that one guy at the game store that just plays the new guy to stump. That's Lorgar in the scheme of uh Horace Heresy, right? Like he's gonna go, he's gonna he's gonna pick on like a regular captain, but as soon as like anyone his size shows up, he's done for. Yes, but the only people his size, there's only like 19 of them in the game. Everything else he can beat up on to at least some some decent extent. It's really, at the end of the day, it's Primarchs are the only thing he doesn't really want to be facing. Even then, if, if dice go your way a little bit, he'll still come out ahead. He has the ability to come out ahead. It's just going to be a little bit tougher because he at least has that Here's... brutal two weapon. Here's a that stupid question. pain on his command squad right. is really good. Yes. What's the order of um, of charging? It's you declare, then they react, correct? You declare your you charges. You declare all your charges. Yep. And they choose, okay, I'm going to react with this one over here so, in this way. And yeah. then yeah. you resolve your reaction, and then they roll the charge distance. So if I like literally put a sovereign right in front of you so that you have to go around and you fail the charge that sovereign and logar will now charge your primark squad and they will not survive in my opinion sure yeah th- i mean that, that's that, that, that's an option absolutely yeah, that's an option. that's just one i i they're like in my head flooded with the different things with the demons you can do hell you can summon um uh cavalry because they're on those big 75 mil bases and they're actually pretty tough to block a charge or maybe to, it, it's so many stupid things you can do i thought they came on 20 mil squares no no stop it where, no, where even the book when they were say, yeah, where the book does it say it can't be a 20 mil square <laughs> stop that sovereign on uh, the 20 mil yeah base. no um L- lorgar is he's in a pretty decent spot i'd say he's on par with two contemptors for sure that puts him at s tier yep yeah no, I agree. I think th- this is an army that is, is hurt a little bit just by, or a faction, I should say, or legion, by what they have. They do lack a little bit, you know, th- they're, I can throw a guy in front of your attack and like that's only the guys you take down. That's very good. Their, their faction ability is not great, but he helps that a lot. Giving Feel No Pain to his unit really makes them a, a lot tougher. If you take... Uh, uh, what's the right of war the dark brethren um that when you're picking units pick the units he wants to go after don't pick the biggest craziest thing send him around to just merc any smaller units and while you're doing that you can give some bonuses to your units that then can go and swing into the bigger things you can give it into um like your galvor bot because with that particular one you get favor when you destroy units that you assigned um its strength, movement, and weapon skill are increased by one when they get that favor. So you can just start buffing other units. So um, no more than three. They talk about all that. So I, I think he does a whole lot. And he's absolutely an S-tier person. Again, he's not going to necessarily win fights versus all the other Primarchs. But that's okay. There's only a few of those you have to fight. All right. Um, Steve, do you need... I pause before you talk about Salamanders, or can you go straight into him? I need a bigger hammer. You need All a bigger right, hammer? Is that what you said? Yes. It's hammer time. Okay. Go for it. All right. So we got Vulcan, the other Primarch with a hammer. I believe that's number three on the list. Um, but of the top three uh, Primarchs with hammers, he's definitely among the top three. So Vulcan, 465 points. He is one of the slower Primarchs with only movement 7. 
he's got that average weapon skill of seven, average weapon skill of six. So he's typical, better than Lorgar at least. Um, strength seven and toughness seven because he's known for his strength and toughness. Six wounds, initiative five because he's also has being one of the slower Primarchs. He's going at the same speed as your basic Marine Captain. He's got six attacks, leadership 10, and a two-up save. He is armed with all kinds of fun salamander, forge, and fire-themed stuff. He's a Primarch. He has It Will Not Die 4-up, so he has better regeneration than the others, although he is annoyingly at the same level as Lorgar, and I wish they gave him an extra little bump to 3-up, but I guess that's probably just a little too much to ask for. And his Warlord trait is Sire the Salamanders. So, when he's the Warlord, he gets his trait, obviously. He gives all your Salamanders that are infantry the stubborn special rule. Which is a really good rule this edition with the amount oh, of leadership modifying that's going around. Yeah. And it will still allow you to take advantage of things such as um I know I can't remember Even Shrouding and stuff like that, you mean? Shroud, yep. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what I mean. Okay. In addition, you get an extra reaction in the opposing player shooting phase. It's not the best warlord trait. But stubborn is good, but it's not the best warlord trait. No. Is it everyone on the board? It's it's. Uh, hold on. It's all your infantry. Yeah, yes. But but <sighs> the, the problem with it is, you're really good infantry. You know, okay, they they have good leaderships. Are either of them already stubborn? You, so like your fire drakes are already stubborn. Okay, they don't need it. Um, he boosts your pyroclast and then the generic list. Yeah, and the generics are fine, but the generics are always a little bit lower anyway. So like. In some ways, yeah. they need it more, but they're already more likely to fail because their numbers are already lower to start with. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Not the greatest. Um, let's see. Let's see if the weapons make up for it. He's got a two-up armor save and a three-up invulnerable save, flat out, which is a great starting point. In addition, he could reroll filled armor saves for wounds inflicted by flame and volkite weapons. I love this because one of the biggest things that's an issue, not an issue, but one of the Scarier things, I would say, at least in our area, is that big unit of the heavy weapons with heavy weapon Volkite squads. Oh, yeah. Because they don't dump out a ton of dice and good strength. And if you know what you're doing, you make them hit on twos and all that nonsense. And he's just going to be like, okay, I'll take it all. I don't care. I eat Volkites for breakfast. So that's a really good start. Next up, we have Dawnbringer. Oh, and don't forget, he's a salamander, so they're wounding on threes at best. Yeah. Um. So uh, uh, his hammer, Dawnbringer, gives him strength 10, AP 1, melee, mastercrafted, two-handed, armor brain melee, and instant death. So he doesn't care about your toughness that much. Like If he wounds you on a two, then he's going to kill you on a two. And it's as simple as that. Dreadnoughts fear this, in my opinion, because the instant death. Yep. No need to worry, like, ah, oh, did I roll a three up or not? It's like, nah, did I wound you? Okay, perish. I like it. It's a lot better than the twin hammer you can find in the PDF that he gave one of his captains. That's yeah, just the unwieldy power mall. Steve, you played these um, in 1.0, right? You played these in what? You played Salamat as 1.0? Um, in the last like three months, yes. Didn't he have an ability on his hammer to like put a small blast down in front of him? Was that him? Maybe. I don't know. I didn't play him in 1.0. Oh, okay. Okay. I had like a 500 point zone more talents for Got giving it. Okay. Okay. And like, Got this it. is fun. I'm going to grow this army for 2.0. Because <laughs> you wanted to check. Okay. That, that's a nice hammer. It's kind of useless against Primarchs, but against anything else, that's, that's a nice hammer. And finally, we have Furnace's Heart, which is his custom little energy weapon forged by Ferris Manus. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a laser type weapon. Well, not laser type, but you know, it's, it's a laser. Yeah, so it's for a laser. the Furnace's Heart, it's range 18, it's strength 7, AP 2, so it's like a plasma pistol almost. It's pistol 1, lance, shock pulse, and burst T6. <laughs> what is this thing? That's great. Uh, burst. If this weapon inflicts a hit, instead of one hit, it inflicts a number of hits equal to the number of the brackets as part of the rule. So you shoot it, and then you hit. If you hit, you do D6 hits. 
interesting. That's why does interesting. Oh, shock pulse. Shock, no, shock pulse is really good. I love playing yeah, with them that, at the that, end of that, that, that makes things uh, snap shoot, right? Yes, yeah, it's super it does heavy. damage. Yeah. All the way up it's to only a strength seven, so it probably won't trigger uh, that. But it has Although lance. It, is lance. it yeah. does have lance. Like so, even uh, five or six. Yeah. Even but then still. you might not want to go against the absolute heaviest things. But even if you're going against stuff that's either a little bit lighter or something like that, yeah. Absolutely go through I it. I think the heaviest you can shock pulse is up to a knight. I think warhounds are immune because they're god machines. Um but yeah, no, that's insane. That's a very scary pistol. And if you don't kill it with the shot, you don't necessarily mind charging it because your weapon is strength 10 with armor bane. So if it's still alive, you will finish it. <laughs> it doesn't last long. Yeah. It, it, the only downside is weapon doesn't have brutal in any way because instant death is nice. But if I have like a f- invul save and I make it, I you didn't hurt me. I think he can one shot a warhound. I'm almost with armor bane because no. he's strength 10 armor bane. Warhounds are what, 14 in the front. So you're pretty so much got penny. six attacks goes to seven attacks. But the AP one, I actually think I, I'll do how, the math later. Well, uh, how many wounds does a warhound have? It's a very fairly good question. All right. Well, while you're looking that up, while I look at that, because this is actually interesting. Yeah, go ahead. I don't think you want. I don't think you want shot to the warhound. Well, <laughs> he'll look that up. He'll take a look. I, I don't think he does. I'm sure he's going to hit every time. I don't get like you still get six to seven hits in. No, the but ability then, like, to do something and do it well are two different things. Two thirds of them will do damage. So that's like four damage going through, and then one in three will be a pen. So that's like one pen, like you know, a super pen from an explosion. So it'll do it'll do like six to eight damage in a turn. Which is good. That's really good, but it's not one shotting a warhound. All right, here we go. So a warhound is weapon like, skill. There we go. Is weapon skill three or five? Right. Sorry. So he's hitting them on threes, right? Weapon skill. Yeah, yeah he's five. seven, so he'd be hitting yeah. on threes if they're weapon threes. skill five. He's got six. He's got six. Uh, t- tell us attacks. the wounds on a warhound is what we wanted to know. Oh, sorry. Uh, HP How twelve. Many points? So 12. twelve. Yeah, he's not making it. Uh, so. No, on average dice, no. But if he rolls above average, he absolutely can. I mean, if a, if you have a, four last cannons, you could one shot a warhead with yeah. good dice. Well, yeah, but I mean, I don't think he necessarily needs the craziest dice because he also still has the furnace's heart to hit it with first. Because you could shoot that uh... in and then charge in. So here we are. I did the math. Seven attacks. I'm going to just round to whole numbers. Then Seven that means attacks. you're not doing the math if you're rounding to whole numbers. Uh, oh, I want to do the decimals. They suck. <laughs> you can't talk he, about like, I'll show you how it works on average. Is, right uh, on average, he does six to eight whole points. Yes. Because um, he has eight attacks on the charge, yeah. which is no. insane. Yeah, because pistol plus not specialist weapon again. Oh, it's two-handed. Hand. Never mind. Two-handed. So he's got seven Yes. I mean, sure. He always holds it one-handed, but it's two-handed by the rules. <laughs> yeah. It is true. The, okay, it, it's very simple. He can, yes, on average, no, but he can. He doesn't need to roll all amazing to do it, but he does need to roll above average. I would say maybe ten percent of the time he can pull it off. I would put maybe. it more than that because what you're really looking for, the only spike is those fives and sixes that you need to get the extra D, D3. That's what you're looking for. So if you can spike about an but extra like, one or maybe two of those, you, you like can do it. three of those, I think. Um, realistically on it, yeah. If you can get three or even if you get two with really good rolls. But yeah, if you want to talk more about related to averages, if you can get three of them. So... One in nine hits will fail to do any damage. Because that's four of 36. Yes. Because twos and threes don't do anything. Fours brings that up to seven out of 36, which will round down to be nice to him. We'll say that one in six hits he inflicts doesn't do damage. Doesn't do a penetrating hit. Yeah. I do find it funny that we're like, can he kill Warhound is like a metric of measure. Well, no, it's simple. He <laughs> has the uh, potential. We're probably spending way too much time on this. He absolutely has the potential, but we it's are. not likely. Definitely are. There you it's go. Not likely. 
Yeah. But let's talk about him otherwise, because that whole discussion, though uh, of interest, um, doesn't give us any indication about him whatsoever. He only moves seven, so he's trash. Moving on. Now, so... <laughs> so, so I was garbage, dear. <laughs> um, I am not going to say he's S tier. I'm not going to say he's no. A tier. I'm going to say he's like B for bruiser. He doesn't buff the army as a whole enough. Like he buffs them, but not enough. I think I could talk you down to C. So, <laughs> so, so who does you, he you go could. with, Steve? If you take him, who who are you putting him with? Where is he best? You put him, you put him with his fire drinks because okay. that's where he belongs. Um, I believe they get a flag if they. I think they get a flag. Or did they, did they have access to the line flag? That's what. That's what I'm. I'm yeah, yeah. They, they can be a. Uh, well, they they can be favorite Vulcan. They can be a retinue. Um. Uh, but- it does not say they it doesn't get a flag. say you get a flag though sadness yeah unfortunately i don't think they do or they at least don't have the option it doesn't look like they have the option to take one so mm. unfortunately no flags it's what you do is make a little death ball um they get no rules benefit for being a retinue so just take them as an elite slot because there's no reason to waste points our lords of war so you take vulcan you take a bunch of these guys you throw them in a spartan and you just pray the spartan doesn't get immobilized or blown up turn one because if it does you spend the entire game walking you play walking simulator thirty thousand. what um dave you can argue for c tier because i'm going c tier on this guy um, yeah, because even their other special rule, the Forge Craft of Nocturne, that's not locked behind nothing, them. Being nothing, depends on, nothing depends on them being retinue. Yeah, so no, I wouldn't so take them as a retinue. take anything. They're good because they're really durable, but they're also really slow. Yeah, so it doesn't hurt as much with him, because if you weren't going to run with him, then he's only one inch faster but, than them, so... But they can't run. He could. Yes. So like if he was in a, tar- a Tartaros squad, for example, or a squad of Tartaros Terminators, they could run up the board. And, you know, instead of going six inches to turn with the Cataphracty, he'd be going seven plus initiative four for 11 inches of turn. That's a big difference. Yes, it is. Especially when your fire drakes are probably kitted out with storm shields and thunder hammers. Um, I, I mean, think no, he'd be nothing forces neat. you to put him with him. Yeah, he'd be neat in a pyroclast squad. I don't think they're the best choice as a bodyguard. Well, they wouldn't be a bodyguard, but you know, as, as a squad for him to join. I don't think I don't think they're the best, but I think it would be interesting because he gives the melee potential to the unit. They don't have one yet, and then his weapon is good against squads. You know, his shooting attacks are good against squads or vehicles. Same with the Pyroclasts, because they have the Heavy Flamer or the Melt-A-Gun version of their flame projectors. Actually, so I was going to argue... throw him in with the Pyroclasts. I, like yeah, I was going to argue a lot. Pyroclasts. And it's not, uh... I think it's actually better than the Fire Drakes, because Fire Drakes are slow, and they're very defensive, and they're very killing, which he already is. I put him in Pyroclasts, because now, you're going to charge them Pyroclasts, that's 10d6 uh, Flamers, plus him swinging at you. But so you're just not charging that. Yeah, Fault exactly. Mm-hmm. You don't charge it, and they have very, very dangerous guns. And if you shoot that squad, they might shoot you back, or he takes the wounds for you. Yeah. And he's already durable as is. I actually like the Pyroclass squad a lot more, believe it or not. What what I think is good about, since the, the Pyroclass is a shorter range weapon, I see it as you're moving up with them. You don't care necessarily about the shooting in the beginning, because you just might be out of range, so you're, say, running up. And when you get into the right position, he breaks off. And he either goes and joins up with a different unit, or he goes and tries to solo a, ver- a unit while your pyro class then you know flamer into someone. So that way you don't have to necessarily worry about them charging. They can be sitting back and they're not going to get st- your pyro class don't get stuck in combat. He's fine getting stuck in for a little while. So I, I kind of like him in that sort of uh, venue. Um, wait, so where are we landing with him? 
Are we? I was going to say C. C. I was going to say C because of the fire drakes, but honestly, I'll move them up to B just to be with the uh, higher classes. I think that actually might bump them up to B because that's a scary unit. More so than the, <laughs> the fire drakes. Yeah. He's a okay. So where are we at? Who is in D right now? D. You know, the only one right now is Ferris Manus, and someone else has to go there sooner or later. Before we're done, yeah. someone has to go into D. I, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to say who's that in C. Vulcan. You're like, tempted to put Vulcan all the way down there. He's strong and he hits things good, but he doesn't. Angar like, is in D tier, right? Uh yes. And he so is no, Angron is C. My apologies. Angron and oh, sorry, uh, Sanguinius are yeah, C. Yeah, C, C. Oh. oh, then maybe he is D. Because, like, we have to ask. Him. See, here's the problem. He, we're he's talking like about in him. this neighborhood. He just hits something really hard. That's what he the, does. The, I th and he's good at hitting things hard. The our only conversation. Dan, stop and let C finish. Oh, you keep interrupting him. He, he's only interrupting skill seven. He's not at that magic number eight where he's winning against Primarchs on average. He's holding his own. And he's just, every Primark beats on squaddies. Nothing special about him there, and he's not brutal on his hammer. So, yes, he's in death, but he's only forcing one save at a time. Yeah. And if they make that save, then instant death means nothing. So, yeah, he's C to D. C minus to D. Yeah. The instant death really, at the end of the day, unless you're fighting a contemptor, is useless because you're already strength 10. You were already instant deathing Marines. I'd rather you have Brutal. Um, even against a contemptor, I'd almost rather the Brutal because I'd rather you just make more, have to take more saves. I know instant death could get you the extra D, BD3 instead, but you could roll a 1 on that D3 and do nothing and do 1 and technically be in a worse position. Um, well, we have our other D choice in it, sounds like, gentlemen. It's honestly because every time we talk about him, we have to put him in another unit. I've never yeah. once heard you say, oh, he's great by himself. He's a great buffer. You know, he supports every time we mention his name. It's always like, oh, but he'd be great in this unit. He'd be he's always like a support character. It's the units because the Salamander units are phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Like almost every single one of them. Almost. Um, so, yeah, he, he himself is not bringing that much, unfortunately. I still love him, though. I would say D. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's fine. Like I said someone else had to go there sooner or later, and we're just not super thrilled with what he does. I remember, D doesn't mean that he's garbage. It just means he doesn't help the army out in the different ways as much as you would like. By the way, we I did check. We did so hard in the comments for that. I could feel yeah. it. Um, I did check, by the way, in 1.0, he had a really cool ability where he did lay down a small blast in front of his base, and that's how many people he hit automatically. It was basically uh, the old stomp rule. He had a stomp, essentially, with his hammer. That would have been cool. He is such but a cool model. He is. He does look very fantastic. The, the army itself looks fantastic. It's a very good-looking army. All right. That gets him done, and we'll go on to Corex. All right, and we are back after a short pause to talk about Corex. So we, we got two, uh, two regular Primarchs left here. So let's get into the leader for the Raven Guard. He's sitting at 440, so a little bit on the cheaper side because they tend to average a little bit closer to 450 or so, but around there. He's his move eight, which um, we're going to see that doesn't slow him down, and that's fine. He's weapon skill seven. He is sixes straight across the board until initiative seven with seven attacks. Obviously, leadership 10 and a two-up save. Um, he has hit and run native. He has deep strike native. And then he has essentially his very special rules. Um, so he is a little bit better initiative than we've seen for some of these. He at least isn't the lowest on the initiatives. Decent amount of attack sitting at a base of seven. Um, and his other stats is web skill seven instead of one of the better ones. But overall, still pretty good. For his warlord trait, he's the sire of the Raven Guard. Makes sense. Um, all your models that are Raven Guard special rule and are infantry or cavalry in his army gain scout and crusader. In addition, you get an extra reaction in the opponent's movement phase. Movement phase is the best one in general, but movement phase is very fitting for these guys. Um, keep in mind that the way the Raven Guard special rule works, depending on what type of thing you are, you get different things. So if your infantry that aren't heavy don't have jump packs or are not Tartaros, then you are essentially getting a shrouded like six up. Um, I forget... Is it after a certain distance? 
do, 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 do. yeah more Outside than eight inches of... away mm-hmm. yeah and they also but that they also get to infiltrate if you have that infiltrate and scout don't stack correct they do they do, they do. okay so you could are you allowed to scout closer but than you can infiltrate I believe there's a restriction. There's got to be a restriction. There. I'm sure I, will, I just don't know it. Could one of you look, look it up, up while I talk about the rest I of this? I will look that up while you move on. Thank you. Um, but for this, it, so their special rules can be really restrictive. Essentially, it's like, oh, if you were really fast, like because you had jump packs, you get this rule. But if you have a jump pack, one of the things you get is to reroll ones in the assault phase when you make your charge. His rule doesn't restrict it the same way. So his bonus says if you're infantry. If you have a jump pack, you're still infantry. Calvary had a different thing. So you can still get your Crusader. So you could be re-rolling ones and have Crusader as well. And be given Scout, which you weren't naturally given those rules in particular. So you can get different bonuses. It's better on certain units. better on your jump pack units. But it makes sense. You're Raven Guard. You should be jumping in. All right. Um, for what he has, his sable armor, it's a two-up armor, say four-up invul, and he has a shrouded four-up. They have FAQ'd it that he gets his shrouded. Even though the Primarchs are fearless, you still get shrouded, so he gets his rules. So he always has a mitigation here. Uh, unless something prevents it, like a uh, night vision and things like that. He's the Shadow Lord. If he chooses to hit and run, the controlling player rolls an additional die when determining the distance move and discards any one of the dice they want. So you essentially get to roll one extra, and then you can choose whichever one you don't want to have. You also get to reroll all failed shadow rolls of one made for him and all models in any unit he has joined after using the hit and run to remove Korax from an ongoing battle. Continues until the start of your next turn. <laughs> so if you essentially leave at the right time, you also get to reroll your ones on your shrouded. Um, for what he gets... His melee weapon, it's strength himself, so strength six, AP two. It's melee, shred, blind. He has fighting styles, and it's two-handed. Makes sense, it's it's claws. Um, for his fighting style, at the beginning of every salt phase, he may choose one of the following, and then he gets that. He could have a murder strike four up, rage four, so suddenly have a lot more, or sudden strike three. So sudden strike is going sooner, yes, initiative? Yes, it's okay. yep. initiative, initiative on the charge. Yeah. So at you can and the rage is the more attacks or the yeah, yeah yes the when more, you attacks, more attacks furious charges more strength I always get those yes. mixed up the rules my armies don't have are the ones I I have troubles with <laughs> That's fine. so if they're faster than you you can suddenly go faster if you just need more attacks because there's a bunch of them on your charge get four more attacks be sitting at like a cool what was he was seven 12. base so kidding at twelve, 12 on the charge, charge. or. <laughs> Give yourself murder strike if that was the big concern. Um, you're already AP two, so this way you can cause some some instant death because it's only on his strength for that. Um, he has um, two different shooting weapons. Like I said, it's two separate weapons. They're both auto and Volkite. Wrath and Justice. It's range twelve. He's strength six, sorry strength six AP four pistol one rending on a three deflagrate and master crafted. So he has all that. Um, his other big key he has is essentially he has a jump pack. For all intents and purposes, it sets him to 14. It does all the cool 14 things. It tells you everything he does. The difference is at the end, uh, ba -ba -ba, is there anything? Yeah. And when he makes a run move using this, he adds, yeah, sorry, his initiative to the 14. No, so that's the same. Um, is there actually any difference, but may not make sure. I don't think know. there's any. No, there's no, no difference. They just word 14. it weirdly. Yeah. So it's a jump pack for all intents and purposes. It's a jump pack. Um, oh, and he automatically passes dangerous terrain checks. That's yes. a special thing. Yeah. So that's okay. That's his extra that he doesn't have to take the dangerous terrain checks. Um, all right. So overall, hmm. Overall, I do think he's reasonably good. I think he... Okay. When we think about him versus Primarchs, he is going to struggle in general. Um, he has ways to get Are lots of sure? attacks. I think he can. I, so, you could go first if you want to. I guess... 
I guess if we assume he charges for a moment, and obviously that might not be the case. So if we assume he charges, he could go faster if he needs to, or just have more attacks if he needs to. Um, murder strike, I'm not so concerned with about in that case. Um, the big thing I think what he would struggle with is being only weapon skill seven. There's a decent amount of when you think of fighting primarchs that are oh. the eights. Yeah. And he's not Mastercraft. No, so... Like the one that is. But, you know, he is hit and run. Yes. So you can dip out, shoot, shoot, run back in. Yeah, I, I think the reason why maybe he can toe-to-toe -to -toe a Primark to a certain extent, maybe not some of the real top fighters, but, yeah, he could rush in. He could probably take maybe the initiative or maybe just the more attacks, and I'll get wounds on you. And then if you're still alive, and I'm hopefully still alive, I'll run away, and now it's my turn. Now you're more injured. Um, the blind part is nice, and but he's, yeah. He's really resistant to shooting because shrouded yes. four up is a nice perk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he's at worst a four up, four up, which is actually very, very good. So he, he does have quite a bit. And if he did the hit and run, you get to reroll the ones, make him even stronger. Um. I think he's a good fighter. I think he struggles against some of these Primarchs. I think he can do well against some of them, but he's he's not the Primarch killer in my mind, um, at least like pound for pound, unless you get lucky. I do think he can do quite well against other units. He does get hurt a little bit by not having Master Crafted, but the Shred at least... I mean, you're already limiting most regular things on twos, unless you were looking at like a Dread. So... And, and Primarchs can hurt regular things, so he's pretty good at that, although he would struggle to a decent set against Terminators because he's not going to um, instant death them in any way. So, yeah, it's invul saves, but they need to fail too before you start taking them down, unless you do the murder strike option. So I guess you'd have to go with that. Um, his shooting attack is decent. You know, have rending on a three means you can pop a few little things down, which is good. He's super fast, which is very big for a Primarch. We've seen that with Sanguinius, and a lot of the other ones have been just a lot slower. So he naturally can go very quick. He can go with his jump pack units, which is absolutely where you want to put him. He can absolutely deep strike down, which is very, very strong. Um, where would we want him? Dark Fury. Dark Fury, you're thinking? Um, yeah, I'm Dark Furies. Yeah. Yeah, because they're, they're the ones with jump packs. I think you need, you want something with a jump pack. Do they have ways to hand out jump packs nicely? Can we hand some out? Assault squads? <laughs> well, I, no, but if I'm going to do anything, that, I put them with Dark yeah. Furies, not assault squads. Yeah, no. Just the units that come with jump packs normally. He doesn't like unlock jump packs for weird stuff. No, nah, that's well, what that, I was hoping that would be for. Because like I did see. The jump pack squad. I, I did see that. more Daytha with. Uh, um, shroud bombs, but unfortunately, you don't those get guys the are cool, thing but they don't they don't they don't synergize very well. No, no, that's what I looked at and noticed. I mean, that they're, they're, you're missing a little bit something there. Um, for rights of war, is he doing anything super strong with that? We talked, we did these not too long ago. So liberation, obviously, if you just want to include a bunch of things that aren't Raven Guard, go for it. He's nice to some extent for that. Um, his base rules don't help it as much, but since he is a good utility, very quick piece, he can help support those parts of your non Raven Guard army that need it. Although his bonus doesn't help them at all. Um, for decapitating strike, um, uh, he okay, it's a shroud five up for the unit, but you already have a four yes, up four on ups. him, Better. and you can take most of it on him. He doesn't seem. Where he probably adds the most is the fact that his Warlord trait adds a bonus to some of your units in a useful way that didn't have it before. Did you ever look up the Scout and Infiltrate yes. thing? So, yeah, so Scout is very simple where it is before. Most units redeploy 6 inches. Some redeploy 12, but most redeploy 6. If you Infiltrate and Scout, you could Infiltrate and then redeploy 6 inches, but you can't go within 9. Basically, you can't go closer than the minimum infiltrating distance of nine. Yeah. All right. So um, not as... And either way, either one of those rules will prevent you from um, charging yeah. in turn one. So where it probably matters the most 
is if you're taking, like I said, um, Dark Fury, stuff like that, if you're taking things with jump packs, you can then give them Scout and Crusader. So if they're starting on the board, you can start in a better position. You might not, you probably weren't charging first turn anyway, but get into a better spot. And or if you don't use it, Crusader is great. You know, for your squads that want to get in the combat, Crusader is going to help them if you're winning to at least take out those units so they don't get stuck in. Or they don't get away, I should really say. Um, I want to like him more than I do. And I'm just not a big fan. Um, I I'm think he's mean. very survivable, which is good. But I don't know if he does enough otherwise. I Can I be know. mean and put him in C? I don't, like I, I'm kind of agreeing with you. Like, you know, he's cool. I like I like him more than I like Sanguinius for some reason. Um, maybe it maybe it's the uh, unit for putting him in. Maybe I, the fact that his shooting is more than once a game. I don't know. I don't I know if I like C. him any more than Sanguinius, honestly. Um, no, I think I with the uh, weapon options on Sanguinius, I think it gives him a little more versatility than you have here. You have a good amount, but again, you're already beating up on regular guys fine, but you're actually struggling as Terminators unless you do the Murderous Strike, which, you know, is good and useful, but then you need the fours. What if you don't get them? You know, because Shred is to reroll unsuccessful wounds. If you're wounding on twos because of your strength, you know, you can't necessarily go hunting. So, I don't know. Does anyone well, want him higher he than does, C? He doesn't rend anyway. Um, no. No, no, that's very true. It, but it doesn't have to rend because it's AP2 anyway. Yeah. So, you're just wanting the murder strike. But I'm just saying, like, if you're already wounding on twos, but I'm only getting my cool... You only take one save to go down bonus oh, on four yeah, up. That's fair. Yeah. Well, that will come to play more against dreadnoughts, though. You need than... it much more against dreadnoughts for sure. Yeah. And especially there, the shred will happen. So anything you get through will mm -hmm. be murder strike. So that he does that not want to fight a Leviathan though. Leviathans will give him quite a hard time with that toughness eight. Yeah. No, don't don't take them. Hmm. Don't go for a Leviathan with him. But you can hit and run at least, so you don't have to stay. That at least is good. True. If he's in a fight, you can't force him that's, into a fight he doesn't want to be in. That's one of the things I like a lot about him. Like that's why, because he could get to that twelve attacks if he really wanted to. I'm. I think that's why I like him more than Sanguinius. I think he could clear through units better. Yeah, I think that he never gets stuck. I think that's why I want to put him in B. Because I think he does more than Sanguinius does in that case. I don't think he gets higher than that because his army buff, you have to take very special army construction to get a good buff on him. But he can get out of fights he doesn't want to be in. He can get into fights he does want to be in. And he can be a harasser, which makes sense for Raven Guard. So, you know, don't throw him at, you know, the biggest, toughest, craziest thing. Throw him at all the other little bit lighter units, the ones that you want to take your Forp Shroud save. Like, you know, look at their unit that has last cans. Okay, not if they have night vision, but oh, there's a unit with last cans or big heavy weapons. I have a Shroud 4 up. I have a Forp Involve Shroud 4 up. I can take tank these hits that my other squad would all lose to trying to get in. So now mm -hmm. I can get into those targets that I was really worried about charging. You know, oh, you got yes. a squad of Melta Guns. I have options to survive that now, and then I'll take out your melted guns. Now my army's in a better spot. So I just yeah, it's I not don't... as good as the night hunter. No, so definitely not <laughs> S, definitely not A. But no. I, I I would say he's better enough compared to Sanguinius. I would put him in B. Absolutely, I agree. Uh, I don't. He I doesn't do enough for the army to get to A, and he can't fight as strongly to get to A. It's his tricks and tactics which will win you games, but there'll be other times. When it just doesn't work. So. He is on par. A contemptor and a half I would say. Which is about B tier for me. Yeah. Yeah I agree. Alright. We have one official Primark left. Um, I, Who was doing this one? Is it one? Is it two? Who really knows the truth? My A <laughs> two take, no more. Yeah, Steve I think it's Steve right? Yeah, it has to be Steve. Yep. yep it's Steve. Steve. 
just got oh i'm looking in the wrong book i was so ready to find him in the back of my loyalist primark book don't know why i would make some jokes mistake. never get old can they get old if they were if they were stale to begin with who knows <laughs> i was actually trying to find the back of my loyalist book though like all right let's flip a few pages oh, you were, oh that wasn't even a joke you were just like in the wrong book flip <laughs> three like where is this genuinely guy genuinely like genuinely genuinely now that said, I will point out that this is the one primark that most important thing right here. This yeah. is the one primark that does not say loyalist or traitor under special rules. That's very true. The most important part. So I would say ju that's just right there, just for list building flexibility. S tier. Moving on. Um, <laughs> he is four sixty five points, or either of the two are four sixty five points. Uh, movement eight, weapon skill, ballistic skill seven. So they're on that upper, well, sorry, upper of average for ballistic skill, lower of average for weapon skill, strength, toughness, wounds, initiative, and attack six. Leadership 10 and a two up save. So overall, not the most impressive stat line. A little better on shooting than most. Um, we got Adamantium Will three up because we just really don't believe in that Psyker stuff, apparently. We got Crusader. And then we got a whole bunch of special rules made just for him. And three Venom Spheres. So three times per game, you can throw a Venom Sphere. That's cool. Um, sadly, he is a unique Primark, so you can't run both the Twins at once. Very disappointing. That would be kind of cool, though. I'm not going to lie. That'd be a kind of cool be. addition. Um, let's see. Swarlord trait, Sire of the Alpha Legion. He is going to give... <sighs> After all models are deployed, including infiltrators and after any scout moves, uh, you get to pick three friendly units that are Alpha Legion, redeploy them to anywhere in your deployment zone or into reserves. And then you get to pick a phase and start the turn to give you most reaction in that phase. So it's also the most flexible on the uh, reactions because it's turn by turn you could change it. Yeah. Unlike Dorns, I pick a turn, a phase, and that's my phase today. Oh my god, that is so good. If anyone remembers uh late eighth, uh sorry, late ninth edition 40k, Tyranids were doing really good because they could redeploy D3 units. And guess what? Here you're redeploying three. That is so good. As long as you're going first. Already. I mean, even if you're going second, you could redeploy into a more defensive position. Like so I was hoping, but, to go but first. I set myself up defensively because you put down your army first. Uh, well, no, there's there is missions here where you are going back and forth. So I guess it is important because there are some missions where it, it is a mm -hmm. trade back. I will also put out like let's say for example, because uh, I used to use this all the time in my custodians in, in Eighth Edition, just like you said. Let's say I you set up defensively because I set up offensively. Then I, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to redeploy my infantry who now cannot get shot by your annoying anti-infantry weapons. Congratulations. It, it, it ha it's, it's, it's secretly and good. Is that, is that, redeploy is, into reserves. I was like, oh, yeah, it, it's, maybe I don't want this on the table anymore. Because you yeah, can it, it's psych your opponent now good. and like, lock down the side of the board, make your opponent deploy around that, and then go, ha ha, LOL, JK, thought there. It is yeah. it, like it's it's mind games which can come and go, but it's actually real good mind games because you could literally, you know, put all your heavy, you could put three anti tank vehicles right on one side of the board, and your opponent goes on the other side of the board to avoid them, and you're like, haha, now I'm over here. It's actually, I don't want to say secretly good because it is good, but it's 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 like, what's the word I'm looking for? I, it, cautiously good? No. Yeah, um, it's situational. Yeah. At the end it's of the day, best it's against Alpha Legion and Raven. Because those are the two that will infiltrate the most. Yeah. If you go second in a deploy everything mission, it, it's not going to be as good. You're right. Yeah. But it still has some utility. Because it is after infiltrating in scouts. Before seize the initiative, though, so it's still a little bit of risk. Yeah. All right, let's get into some of these special rules. We have everywhere and nowhere. So the start of the battle before any models are deployed. So before deploying, Alpha should be given one of the following rules: either infiltrate, scout, or Dan's favorite, deep strike. Yeah. Oh, and you pick up to three friendly units that are Alpha Legion to get the same special rule. 
So you'd be like, yeah, you know, this uh, this squadron of Kratos tanks, it could deep strike. Because it so doesn't good. say infantry. Just oh god, friendly units. It, so that are Alpha Legion. I'm going to argue immediately at this point that this, because it doesn't specify infantry or vehicles, that makes them automatically S tier in my opinion. Deep Strike 3 Contemptors and watch as they can now deep assault out of Deep Strike. Deep Strike 3 Kratos engines. Why? Because who cares why? It's just... Because, th- you know, Deep Strike mishaps are funny. I, honestly, this is, this is next level ridiculous. Um, Did they ever FAQ that? I hope not because that is absolutely ridiculous. I really hope not. My gut says no, they haven't. Um, no, Would what I be they changed was his Perithian did? scales. Okay, we'll get to that one soon. Yeah, I will ask you to fill me in on what changed with that one when we get yeah. to it, though. I don't have it pulled up right now. Yep. Okay, so before deployment, you have to pick something. Go, oh, that's your list. Cool. I'll take this rule. That's really strong, as you could imagine. All right, then we got Insidious Mastermind. At the start of a turn, where the contr- where I felt, oh my god, words, words, more words. <laughs> it's a lot of words. Okay, so all your non vehicles are going to gain something if at the start of the player turn you're the active player. So at the start of your turn, you could give all your non vehicles one of these rules either fleet two preferred enemy everything or sudden strike one oh my god preferred enemy everything oh each my of god. them each of them you get for one turn once per battle yep so you're gonna get all three of these things at some point in the game if you need and this is disgusting yeah it is <laughs> here's my 10 man last moving on one. <laughs> moving on the Tithian scales. So Tool just read the first sentence. Yeah. So here's the other part. In addition, if Alpharius is the only model in his unit when declared as a target of an attack, um, because this you were changing the second sentence to say this, hits caused by attack with the weapons that are flesh, brain, or poison, gain no benefit when rolling to wound, and are resolved as standard rules. Um that's essentially the thing. So if he's the only one there and you're targeting Fleshbane and Poison, have whatever their natural strength is. Okay. Right. Which is almost exactly the rule as they've written it, but that is what they technically have changed it to. It's because, in theory, his rule doesn't work like as rules are, are written if he's in yeah. a unit. Yes. Because if oh yeah, that's the thing. Because maybe yeah, if he was in a unit. His rule originally let him be in a unit. Now he has to be on his own to get that rule. Yep. Yeah, that's the distinction then. Okay. Okay. Good FAQ. I like it. Yes. All right. Next up, pale spear, strength user, AP one power weapon with melee, armor, being instant death, two handed. It's not mastercrafted. That makes me kind of sad. <laughs> it's like Vulcan's hammer, but it's not strength ten. Meh. Meh. All right. Next up. I mean, instant death is really nice. It's better than uh, murder strike. Yeah. But I mean, an AP one's really nice too. But it's only strength six, which I don't know. I expect more of a primark. All right, so finally we have the Hydra Spite, range 18, strength 8, AP 3 plaza weapons, assault 2, rending on a 4, and master crafted. Nice. Yeah, as long as you target the right type of thing. When he gets to pick out the models, he's a Primark. Yes. Well, I just so, mean the right type of unit. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, going for things that are on 3 up saves for that, not 2 up saves. That's fair. Um, he himself is all right. The things he hands out are phenomenal. So he scales nicely, very nicely, not incredibly nicely, but very nicely. I think he's going to really shine in like a four thousand to five thousand point game. 
be pretty good at 3,000. I think after you get past the 5,000, why, why is this my brain right now? I think past 5,000, he begins to taper off just because it's only three units getting Deep Strike or something. Um, yeah, that's an easy A. I don't, I don't know if he's S tier, but he's an easy, easy A. I'd argue S tier, honestly. <laughs> that's because that's Deep Strike. That's what puts you right no, there. No, not even just Deep Strike. Okay, deep Strike is fine. Don't get me wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you get preferred enemy everything? Sun Strike is cool. Sun Strike 2 is great. It's once, yeah, but... Okay, here's a 10-man Volkite squad. Re hitting on threes, let's say, rerolling ones. Wounding on twos, reroll ones. Here is a Terminator squad that just charged you. Hitting on four, hitting on threes, because Lernians get plus one in. No, that's not going to work. Because it's at the start of the controlling player's turn. Yeah, so Lernians would get plus... But I'm confused. The Lernians charge like, in. It, it, Oh, when you are charging. I thought you said. Oh, when, when you're you charging charged. in, not charged. Yeah. yeah, no, no. When you're charging in, sorry, I probably didn't say it loud enough. Um, when you're charging in, your lands get plus one to hit. Now they reroll wounds and hits. <clears throat> oh, your 10 man lands well, cat is. One's the hit and wound. One specifically for preferred enemy. For right. hit and yeah. wound. Yeah, that's what I said. Um, last cannons. 10 man last cannon squad. Now they just got that, that much scarier. Um, that plus with deep strike. Uh, like, sure, he's. Man in combat. It is the cerebral player's choice. Yes. It takes knowledge of when to execute to make it good. It's not I'll an agree. autopilot tool. Like, uh, like the other S tiers, I would say, are autopilots, where it's like, oh, yeah, I know what this guy does. It says, I crush you. This guy, not so much. It's more of a, I have the tools w once. I have my one big shot. And that one big shot is going to be incredible. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, that one shot is going to hurt. So I, I want to make sure I, I have this idea correct, and I believe I do. And we probably discussed this when we talked about them originally. Rewards of Treachery. Whatever you, you pick, it says at the end, they exchange the original Legion of Stardust X special rule for Alpha Legion special rule. So therefore, mm -hmm. he can join that unit, yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That I, I think... Hand him out the rule. That I think probably does put him... I guess. Maybe it does put him this because it's not not exactly what he does for for necessarily his particular units. Because when I look through their units, uh, Lernaeans are are cool and all, but other than that, I'm not really thrilled with a lot of their special units. Um, I think their rule kind of helps anyone because the minus two on the distances that you're looking at, all of that's really nice um, for shooting, charging, all of that, all your measurements. Um, the names are, are 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 fine, but I look at the other ones. I'm not super thrilled with it until I, I look know. at some of the special it's cues. The, it's the deep striking fire drakes, or just huskarls. Oh, yeah, it, it it it's that viability of what you can decide to throw in. You could really make some different choices, and you can decide. Your... Treachery, it's one unit stat block, and in that right of war, you get th up to three copies of that unit stat block. That's but, the other thing. Like, yeah. You could you could make um and Kane just dreadnoughts at home with this guy. You don't even need to steal them, the deep strike. Yep. <laughs> That's true. Honestly, 10 man fire drake deep striking, um that's petrifying. Yeah. That is or taking uh what was the stupid Imperial Guard unit that's really dumb? Um you have to the you, one with the but you don't take fist, Imperial Guard stuff. No, not Imperial Guard, um Imperial Fist, sorry. Oh, okay. Um they're they're plus guards. They're is it no, yeah, are they the Terminators? Are they the Terminators? No. Yeah. No. Terminators with shield and solarite fist. Huskars. Or is just that just a normal Huskars. Huskars? Okay. I mean okay. Okay. generic unit, but he can't steal generics. Yeah. So he'll steal the Huskar. Yes. Yeah, Huskars. he has yeah, he's just still name things. Like I said, if that you take that terrifying. coils of the Hydra, you could take multiple copies, and the turn they come down, they get plus one to hit. So if you're <laughs> if you're timing that well and well wait, when's the timing of this? At uh, the start of any turn, when you're the active player, you couldn't necessarily bank on it because if they're in deep strike, you don't know if they'll come in when you choose that preferred enemy because you haven't rolled yet for it. But still somewhat likely, or if it's, say, turn four because you failed it a few times, you're just willing to chance it, you could absolutely have the plus one to hit. Preferred enemy rerolling ones, you're going to potentially do a whole, whole lot of good. Um, or if not, sudden strike one maybe is what you do in that turn. 
uh, depending on what the type of units are that are coming down. But yeah, I think he almost has to be S just because of the options he gives you. Um, again, he himself versus other Primarchs, no. But he'll fight anything else just fine. You know, at least to an extent, because again, that instant death. I, I, Unless you're going against Terminators, you know, it's quite good. Because Terminators, I always worry, instant death is nice, but you only have to one roll one save. You make one save, I didn't hurt you. So his fighting is not great, but everything else he does is amazing. All right. Um, so that fills out Primarchs. We now have some special things that we are going to attempt to get to. All right. Um, that puts Dan to talk about Valdor. Yes, the Primarch that shouldn't be a Primarch, but he's a Primarch because he just you know shouldn't have a stats removed. So, ah, that Constantine Valdor, he is a low, low price of 350 points. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying he's not. You always take him at 125 points uh, extra, 425, because um, the only option he can have is to take a teleport transponder, right, which I will discuss in a couple seconds. Um, his war gear, other than the miser cord, frag grenades, melt bombs and airy strike, are war gear just to remember uh, melt bombs frag grenades we know what those are airy strike uh basically makes you mishap um his special rules he's got lightning blows six up all that means is that on a six to hit he generates an extra hit uh counter attack we know what that is and that's really it for his special rules he's also a skirmisher like every custodian ever he's unique um stat wise he's very weirdly not like up there with the primarchs he's weapon skill seven which is kind of high movement eight only Ballista Skill 5, Strength 5, Toughness 5, 5 Wounds, Initiative 6, uh, 5 Attack, Leadership 10, 2 Up. So the lowest of the prime marks, if you will. Yes. Um, and again, he's 475 because you must always take him with Teleport Transponder. Um, it's an option, but it's not. Teleport Transponder, for those who don't know, it basically um, it allows you to select up to three units with five models. Independent characters attached to those units do not count. Towards the five man limit. So, like if he joins a, lim a unit of five Aquan Terminators, technically that's six units, but he doesn't count. So, it's a five plus an independent character. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Those get Deep Strike. So, essentially, him a, and three squads get Deep Strike. Now, if you attach leaders to those squads, sure, whatever. You could, they could get Deep Strike as well. Um, but it's again, it's a maximum of five, not including the character. His Apollonian Spear is uh has the shooting and also melee profile in shooting it's strength plus two. Oh, sorry i mean they put the melee first not the shooting uh the hyper velocity bird bolter is 18 inches strength five ap2 assault two concussive one actually not a bad shooting weapon it's ap2 and concussive i believe is if you hit um you take the weapon skill hit or is it if you wound you could take the weapon skill hit concussive i think you have to actually get hurt Okay. You have to wound. They don't need to fail the save. Yeah. Got it. So okay. At AP two, you might get a wound in. I mean, if you're not, if you're shooting something that's not going to shoot you back. Well, no, at otherwise, AP two, you need... should get the wound in. You just don't, yeah. you don't actually have to. Yeah. Kill them for it. You just have to have hurt in, them. In melee, he's got the Apollonian spear, which is strength plus two, so strength seven. Uh, AP two melee specialist weapon, lightning blow six up. Okay, so real quick, they fact this: it's not double lightning blows. It's only. <laughs> He gets lightning blows once. Yeah. No one knows why they added it again. Murderous strike four up. I will point out that his Apollonian spear for some odd weapon uh, reason is not two handed, but it's also a specialist weapon. So you don't get the miser cord special rule. Miser cord is an additional. Is, wait, is miser cord a specialist weapon? I never had to use it because I just used my actual weapon. Huh. Steve, do you have the Imperium book with you? Or Dave, I, I, can, with you? I can look it up. Yeah, check Miser Cord real quick if it's a specialist. That's we actually, it's not two handed. It's the only spear that I know of that's not two handed. That's really weird. He also has the Corinthian War Plate. He's got a two up, three up, and anyone that can draw a line of sight, any model that's loyalist uh, that can draw a line of sight to Constantine Valdor um, is, is, uh, can use his leadership. And that's kind of it for Constantine. Um, he doesn't actually have a ton of rules. I mean, sure, he can deny Deep Strike near him with the Airy Shrike. That's kind of cool. That's a support unit. He, he, 
he kind of has a lot of attacks. Well, not really. He's got five attacks. Uh, six if it's a um, nemesis unit. Maybe seven if Miser Cord's a specialist weapon. So seven attacks isn't bad, or six. Um, Counterattack one. It's weird because, and I say this with all the love of my heart, one, the model I don't like because it's so damn busy. And I know we discussed that before. But two, I think he's just a cheap Primark. Like, he's 475. So you, he's like, or he's the only Primark you can take, what, sub 2000? If I did the math correctly? Um. Well, he's at, th- he, he can base be 300 something, so he would fit. Yeah. So without the teleport homer, because the teleport homer would be 475, so then you have to put him in, no, wait, 25% for Lord of War, right? Yeah, 25%. So he can go in a 2,000 point list with a teleport homer, which is the only way you can do that, by the way, because the only other way to get a teleport homer is you have to hit 3,000, you have to get a Tribune, and you have to buy the teleport homer. That is the only way to get a teleport homer sub 3,000. Or at 3,000. He's the only way to do it sub 3,000. So, I mean, he's good that way. Now you have th- three deep striking term uh, uh, custody squads in a 2,000 point game. It is, a Miser Cord is not a specialist. A specialist? No. All right, so he doesn't get an extra attack. It's weird that his spear is one handed and none of the other spears are. Uh, whatever. He's, just, um, he's a strong boy. He's a strong boy. Um, so here's the thing when you look at him, He's very meh until you realize that at 2,000 points, if you allow Primarchs, he can literally deep strike three <laughs> units. That's very insanely scary for Custodes because normally it's only at 3,000 points you can do that. Yeah. Uh, that's so, my only. So who does he my go one in? Trick pony. Oh, God. You can put him with really anything because the Terminators are I fast. Move, you put it, yeah, they're moving seven. You give the Aqualons my favorite my favorite customization. You give them claws and a fist. So now they have four attacks, and you can do, you know, four attacks at strength five, shred AP2, or an initiative five, or four attacks at strength 10, AP1, initiative one. So you have variability, right? You can put it with header on guard if you want with du- dual Meridian Blades to get Murderous Strike four up on the entire squad. But honestly, if I'm taking him, I'm putting him with the Aqualons. Now everyone has a four up in vulnerable. He's got a three up in vulnerable, and that's a five man brick with him making the six man brick of just deal with me at two thousand points, which is legitimate insanity. Yeah, like I I don't think at two thousand points you can really deal with that unless you toss like twenty las cannons at it, and even then, they're three wounds each. With like a two up, four up, and they don't instant die to las cannons. Like th- at two thousand points, that's a terrifying prospect, and that's only one unit. There's two other units coming down with them. Yeah. That's, yeah at two thousand so points, you just got to hope to take them out before they show up, because they still yeah. got to try and show up. So here's the thing, and here's the funny part. Like, okay, he, he's deep striking. Let's say five custodian guard with spears. Your normal line troop. That is still terrifying. Because your normal custodian guard is strength seven AP two with four attacks, five with reading bleed below, six on the charge, yeah. and initiative five. Like he, it's so weird because like you look at him and it's like he's basically like Ferris Manus. He's D tier, right? So maybe C tier, maybe C tier. Yeah. Because the, the leader, but like the fact that at two thousand points you can deep strike fifteen custodians. Actually, technically fifteen plus three characters. So. You can deep strike 18 custodian guard is legitimate insanity. And I think that's really the only value he has. And I that's kind of mean, but no, I agree. Um to to most of that extent. Like I said, versus other Primark type characters, yeah, his his stats are worse in general. He's not going to do nearly as well against them. Um, even the ones that aren't super fighting, he Mike is probably getting that class by, but he's a bit lower. He doesn't really have ways to buff the army besides you can take an extra upgrade on him. That puts him to Primark levels. I don't I don't know if it pulls him that far up, though. Don't get me wrong. That is good. But at the same point, I want more than, like, I take you because for an extra 125 points when I take you, I can get a cool bonus. Like, if that's all you're doing for me, yes. are you really doing anything? That's the problem. Me? 
So to me, he's D tier, right? Yeah. Which is kind of blasphemous to say. Also, the model's not great, but he's D tier. But like, if you include him with the rest of the army, and let's say you're playing a two thousand point game, imagine well, let's, if you let's will assume yeah. three thousand. That's the assume standard 3, level for this game because we're not so, bringing other 3, primarchs at less. Here's the fun part: at three thousand, he's a waste. I'd okay. rather take a tribune. I'd rather take a tribune. Tribune for three hundred points plus what one twenty five. So at four twenty five, so for fifty points less, I take a tribune who has exactly the same stat line. I'm not at, well, except the, they're four wounds. So he's got one less wound exactly the same stat line for 50 points less well also keep in mind at 2000 points you can bring most of the other primarchs ah but can they deep strike some of them but even if not you're going to deep strike close to me that's fine i'll go hunt you down potentially like he's going to be literally avoiding primarchs because he's probably not winning that fight especially the ones that fight well the other ones, like, if he sees, like, Lorgar, maybe sure. But Although, the ones that can fight, so, he doesn't want to be around them. Counterpoint, right. every custodian is a chosen warrior. So if you charge a Primarch or a Primarch charges you, you let a custodian take the Primarch challenge, and Valdor and the rest of the squad li literally carve the rest of the retinue up. No retinue survives that. Uh, what I do then is, what I do my challenge, I challenge with my sergeant. Ah, uh, yeah. You do that. Yeah. It, it goes both ways. Like, yeah. assuming the primary's not on his own. If he's on his own, then I don't care because I'll go through your stuff. But if he's not on his own, then I'm not challenging with my primarch. My primarch's going to fight into your unit, kind of thing. So, um, where, okay where would C. you put him then for the moment? It would be D, maybe C, maybe B, just for the sheer fact that at 2000 points you can deep strike this guy at, at ridiculous. But honestly, without that deep strike, D. 100%. Yeah. Without that deep strike, D. With I that deep strike... I could see the deep strike getting him to a C. C. I don't think it gets him any higher than that. C. Because he does, he has exactly one buff. And let's face it, there are army compositions where that buff will be a detriment to you. Like, yeah, you're, you know, oh, I'll survive last cannons. Sure, but if I have enough stuff, I can take out a couple of those squads or hurt them enough where then you hit me, maybe hurt me a bit, and then I smack you back. And at 2,000 points, what you're dropping down is most of your army. Yeah. Because of points yep. cost. I'm fine with that, because if I have good shots, I'm maybe kill you first. What was that, Steve? Especially the way Dan runs his custodies. Yes. 2,000 points is like, what? Four squads? <laughs> like, if you're deep striking a bunch of those, remember, if you have nothing on the board, yeah. you lose. If you only have one or two units left on the board, because at 2K, all the rest are left. hidden. I'm just hoping. And if I'll I'm honest, going I first, I got two turns to take you down. At least. Like, I know you left, but honestly, at 3,000 points, I wouldn't even take them. I would still just take the Tribune. Yeah. It saves me 50 points, and the Tribune has more options, and it's literally the same stats. And the Tribune's a turn of war, just like him. The only difference is he's one less wound, and he's not a Primarch. Woo. Yeah. No, I'm... I'm fine at I unless Steve feels differently. I'm fine at C because he does add for more points something that is very big for your army, but that's kind of all he adds. Yep, I agree. The army buff bumps him from C to D, uh, D to C. Yeah, yes. if it wasn't for that, I agree. D. Yes, D. but he oh, he allows your army to do stuff that is characterful and strong. So yeah, and yeah, other things do it cheaper, but in bigger games. I'll give him C for that. Like he's passing. He's got like, you know, an 80. Like he's he's he showed up to class. I don't I don't know what school you went to that 80 is is C's. A C. I know. That's what I was just gonna say. You went to, you went eight, to school of hard knocks over there. Which is Sorry, the funny part is fluff wise. I, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Fluff wise, it's funny because in the books, Valor kicks absolute ass. So I look at the stat line. But, I'm like, but in the books, if we followed any of that, you'd bring three space marines and three thousand points. So very true. Like the the books have to say that you're cool. You can't do bad things in the books. <laughs> All right. Um, who's taking Snake Boy? Is that you or me, Steve? Um, good question. How uh, confident are you in uh, Snake Boy? Um, how confident are you in the changes that Emperor's children get if they take Snake Boy? 
have this. I'll cover the changes. You cover Snake Boy. Okay, that sounds good. Let's go okay. through changes first because that's going to matter to yes. His discussion makes no sense unless we say those first. Yep. So just right off the bat, if you take Fulgrim the Snake Boy, then all your Emperor's children replace normal Emperor's children with Acid Trip Emperor's children. That's like the super short version of what's about to happen. I do like so, the fact that we say acid trip. <laughs> I mean, they're stupefied, bro. I don't know. I don't know how else to explain them. Just like whoa, like they get stronger and stuff. It's super weird. Just gotta get to the right thingy. Okay, here we go. So, you replace your Legion's Astartes with Legion's Hereticus, subtype Emperor's Children. You are going to give up all your standard Emperor's Children stuff for this new set of stuff. So everything you think you knew, forget it. I mean, you get your Legion units, but that's about it. Um, for your advanced reaction, instead of getting the perfect counter, or whatever they call it, you know, the thing where you charge me, no, uh I charge you. Yeah. Instead of that, you're going to get Twisted Desire. It is used once per game in the opposing player's shooting phase where they shoot an entirely Legion's Hereticus Emperor's Children unit that's not falling back, which is weird because you can't react when they're falling back anyway. Nope. Um, the reacting unit immediately becomes stupefied and adds two to stupefied rolls made against wounds and flip this part of the shooting attack that triggers this reaction. Huh? What? Okay, so to make that make sense, stupefy is their special brand of feel special brand of feel no pain variants because that's something they've been exploring a lot in the last couple of things they've published. So, stupefy, part of the base legion trait, Lords of Profligacy. Um. So, after shooting attacks been resolved against a unit completely made of Emperor's Children with this rule, um, if that unit's not falling back, you could choose to become stupefied. If you're stupefied while pinned or suffering by a concussive, congrats, you got rid of all those effects. They're no longer there. When you're stupefied, you can only make snapshots. And you cannot make reactions. If you make a charge... As a stupefy unit, you're disordered. But you gain plus one strength while stupefied, which is pretty cool. When you make, suffer an unsafe wound and you're stupefied, you get to make a stupefy roll, which is the damage negation roll. You can't take if it's an instant death hit. But otherwise, on a six up, you ignore the wound. Yay. If you are fearless, you add one to the roll, so now it's a five up. And if you're doing the advanced reaction from a five up to a three up. So that's pretty solid. Um, Sam's mitigations you won't stack with your other stuff. At the end of the controlling player's following turn, you're no longer stupefied. While it's stupefied, you don't take any further morale checks in movement phase or shooting phase. You cannot be pinned. If you're forced to move, if you are forced to move, such as falling back, you lose being you're no longer stupefied. So that's how you get rid of that little uh, effect. So I guess you got to win combat against them. Yeah, you gotta, basically in the assault phase, you got to force that uh, extra morale check. If you become stupefied while charging, the charge continues, but it's disordered. Um, that basically just then it's just clarifying use cases of when do you gain it and lose it. Basically, you get shot at. You could be like, "I'm gonna be stupid," and then you're good. Yep. That's the sh super short version. And yes, you can be decide to be stupid when you get overwatched at. All right. I'm going to gain access to some new war gear options. You're going to lose access to the Phoenix Warden console. And you're going to change out some rules on Phoenix Terminators. And you're going to get some different uh, warlord traits. Yeah. But basically, that's uh, that's the main bulk of what you get. We could get more into this whole thing in its own dedicated episode. 
basically instead of being fast, you you get high off the pain or something and <laughs> zone yeah. out. You're trading a resilience and some pet in certain ways better close combat, but you're just not moving as quickly anymore. You're not beating everyone out like you used to. All right, so let's talk about the big snake man himself. First of all, he's a demon Primark. A demon Primark means you have the rules of demon and Primark. Um, they make it a giant full page list, but at the end of the day, it essentially just means whatever demon rule is you got and the Primark special stuff, you got that too. So like you cause fear too, you got will not die five up. You're bulky six, you're relentless. You get to allocate your your attacks. Your stats can't be negatively modified except for wounds, all that stuff. So it's, it's essentially just all Can it be positively together. modified? He's a demon, right? Um, he so does he get the plus one strength, plus one toughness? It, like it's one it's the, it's the idea of you can't be negatively modified. Um, he's so mean fear. Uh, as part of either ship, allocate the models. Um, those hits for yeah, okay. Um, then one of those models must be the warlord. Um. It, yeah, he's considered to have both demon and primark. It's the very last line. Right. So yes, he would be so, modified. Plus one strength, plus one toughness on turn one and two. Yeah, and then normal base uh, turn three and four, then minus one. Yeah, by rules, okay. he, he is currently done that. All right, okay, so he, okay. he is six hundred points for a fulgrim transfigured. He is a move nine. Um, he's going to be weapon skill eight, so he's got the good weapon skill plus skill six. That's fine. He is strength, toughness, and wounds of seven. Remember, early he counts as a demon, so he'll be at eights on those other than wounds. He is initiative eight, so he's still very, very fast. He's sitting on seven attacks, of course, with his leadership 10 to up save. That doesn't change. Um, he, of course, is unique. He is Legion of Hereticus, Emperor's Children. So that, now, uh, the one thing we didn't mention about this, just to make sure it's clear, that if you're choosing, if you're choosing him, since he is Hereticus, the army must be Hereticus as well. You're not, it counts, it counts as your Legion rule, you replace your Emperor's Children Legion rule with Legion's Hereticus Emperor's Children, and they have to agree. So that's the only way to take him. Um, and then he, his other special thing is a move through cover. All the other ones are related to what he gets otherwise. He's an Avatar Perfection. During the controlling player's charge subphase, him and any unit he's a part of must try to charge if there's an enemy unit that has any models with an unmodified weapon skill characters at six or more within 12 inches. So if someone's a good fighter within 12 inches, you must try to charge them. And it does clarify that this does allow them to charge someone that they did not shoot. So you can't do that sort of trick of, I don't want to charge those guys. I'll shoot here. No, he doesn't care. He's like, no, I'm still going after them. <laughs> He's um, sneaking out the enemy champions. Yep. In that now, fight subphase, best. yeah. In that fight subphase, the controlling player must issue a challenge, and you have to nominate Fulgrim. So you have to choose for him the challenge. If it's accepted by an enemy that has a weapons characteristic of six or more that does not have Primark or Demon Primark unit type, so as long as they're not a big enough guy, while the challenge is ongoing, um, he hits on a two up. So he doesn't care about if he's in a challenge and they're not a Primark of any form, he hits on two ups. He's strength seven slash eight early on in the game, maybe six later, but he might be very well wounding on two. So he might be hitting wounding on twos. In addition, uh, the first reaction made in each game turn by him and the unit he's joined does not take up the reaction. So he specifically gets an extra reaction. Um, as for special rules, he has a serpentine demon form. Um, he has a two-up armor, four-up invul. Um, if he has four or fewer wounds, he gets plus one um, on his die roll for it will not die. So remember, Primarchs naturally have the five-up. He can get it to be a four-up if he's injured. Um, if the start of any of the player's turns, Fulgrim Transfigured has two or fewer wounds and is not locked in combat, a controlling player may, may re choose to remove him from play as a casualty. If it's removed from play in this manner, the opposing player achieves no objectives or secondary objectives that score by removing them as a casualty. So remember, he's your warlord, he's a primarch, all of that. But if he has two or less wounds, you can just pick him off the board. He counts as destroyed, 
but they don't get any bonuses whatsoever. So if he's about to go down and they might get multiple points off of this, just remove him. Um, Howard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he would be. No, yeah. He's yeah. not going to go. To, he's He won't go down fighting. Absolutely not. So for his blades, his weapon. At the start of each combat, he chooses one of the following. Decapitating strikes. Um, these are both melee. It's his strength at AP2, melee murder strike on a 4-up. His sundering blows are strength plus 3, so strength 10 or potentially 11 early on. AP1, it's melee, brutal 2, wrathful blows, 3, and unwieldy. So he will swing last, but otherwise very, very good. Wrathful blows. A model makes attacks with a weapon with a special rule, makes an amount of attacks equal to the number shown in the brackets, regardless of the attacks. And any bonuses. So if he uses the second one, he's going to be strength 10, AP 1 with Brutal 2, but he only ever swings three times and he goes at initiative 1. Luckily, his other weapon is still pretty good. His strength at user early. In the first two turns, since he's a demon, the murder strike for up isn't going to matter so much because you're going to be strength 8, which means you are essentially instant deathing the average thing anyway. Murder Strike would matter more if you're hitting something big enough. You're hitting Dreadnoughts or people at, like, Toughness 5 and other stuff like that. The other ability is for if you're swinging against the vehicle. Because now at least you're at Strength 10. Um, you could use against some other stuff because Brutal 2 is nice and the vehicle doesn't care about that part. But going last could be a pain and only getting three swings could be a pain. He is a Zion of Corruption. All units that have the Emperor's Children special rule in his army, including Fulgrim... Replace it with the um, Hereticus. In addition, you cannot include Fulgrim Transfigured in the same army as Fulgrim. So that essentially just says, if he's in the army, you have to be the Hereticus. But the base rule for the type of um, Legion trait required that anyway. And he has, oh God, he's got a giant thing about wings that I'm going to pause real quick here. All right, we pause very we pause briefly there to take a look. It's just a jump pack. Um, he does not auto pass his dangerous train test, but otherwise it's just a jump pack. So he does move fourteen. It is him his other move, but obviously he can move fourteen if he wishes. Um, this boy is six hundred points. That puts him at the same cost that we had for original Horace, who we put at B. Because, like, he's good, but at 600 points, I've got to consider your points. And I think this guy you got to consider as well. One, he changes your army. So you have to think about that as well. Because you have to want what he does to the army. Because it is quite different. You know, you're not swinging before people the same way you used to. Now, you're essentially more survivable in certain ways. As long as they're shooting you. Um, which does mean your opponent could play with that a little bit. Whether or not they're shooting you and things like that. Um, he has to charge. The fact he has to challenge, I don't like, because like I said, there's cases where you're a chosen warrior, you'll soak up all the damage on something else and I'll kill your squad standing around you. So him so, having the challenge is thematic, but not great. Real quick, one of the yeah. very first changes Panoptica did was to basically remove that. Because they did that with Gar Kabanda, because he's a gargantuan creature, so technically, yeah. you know, it, and they did that with Fulgrim, because it was absolute. it makes him, oh, I have a chosen warrior sergeant, congratulations. Or even just, really, I have really a sergeant. Dumb. That's what I said. Yeah, I'll, sergeant, I'll which, soak it on the sergeant yeah. and I'll have my Primark take out the rest of your squad. You're not running anywhere, but I can make sure the rest of your squad is down so that the rest of my squad survives. And then I'm just going to try to pummel on you with the amount of attacks. Here's the funny part Korax loves this because um, Korax had hit and run. Mm -hmm. So he charges Korax and his squad. Sergeant takes all the hits. Korax then hits and runs out and charges Fulgrim. Yeah. It, it's, it's, what probably helps Fulgrim the most is that early, since he is a demon, if he's at toughness eight, that's a level that average things can't even touch. Because now he's essentially a Leviathan in terms of that. So a lot of base Marines, you could go into a lot of units and they won't even be allowed to touch you early in the game. It's a good toughness in general to go against other heavy things. A weapon skill eight with initiative eight means, yeah, he outclasses not every Primark, but he helps out class a lot of them, especially with his, his extra toughness and all. His weapons let him down a little bit in that. Maybe not entirely, but like they're 
They're good, not absolutely crazy amazing, again, for 600 points. But for 600 points, I want him to be outclassing everything. I want him to be doing tons for my army. If you notice, he does zero for his army. He forces Other you to change, change your army type. That's not yeah. true. He completely replaces it with a different one. That That's is, not yes. nothing. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. he, he alters your army. And if you, if you believe that to be a good alteration, which honestly, I think it's actually pretty good. But if you believe that's a good alteration, he's helping you. But otherwise, he doesn't actually help you at all. I can you be can you be Legio Hereticus without him? Out of stupid nope. curiosity. Oh, no, so it's you really, need it's, some, it's you need something tax. to force it. Permitted. Yeah, I so think it's, currently it's you can. If someone wanted to, like, go ahead. I don't care. Like, that's cool. But I think te I think by rules, you, you need to use that to do it. Honestly, I'd say D. The fact that, like, he's, he's literally a 600-point tax, so he can't even be taken at 3... Oh, if wait, he was 450, I would really like him. Yeah, I'd well, agree. 450, if he was, like, 425 to 450, I would really like him, especially if they fix the melee. At 500, I would want them to fix the melee to something a little beefier. At 600... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I agree. No, nope. that that little like sigh wide at the end, one hundred percent. Yeah. Um. The problem is, it's not that he's bad. He is. He is in every way good, and he is in ev in many ways better profile than many of these primarchs. Especially remembering that he's a demon, he gets some other special stuff. He is better in combat than a than a reasonable amount of these primarchs. However, you're paying so much more for him, and he's forcing different army rules on you, and he doesn't buff the army, not even his warlord trait. His warlord trait's all about him, which is fitting. It's a perfect fit, but it doesn't do much. So, no, I would... We're thinking D? I'm D. Sorry. I'm not, a, considering the pain I experienced with the 600 points, I'm going to agree with the D. Yeah. yeah. It, it, Honestly, I would I would put him C hmm. if he didn't have that that like it's called challenge locking. If he wasn't challenge locked, I'd consider a C. I'd put him at C for sure if he wasn't challenge locked. But you you can you can do weird janky things that if he's with a unit, I've now and I and let's assume I have a good combat unit. Again, if he's going against a bunch of regular guys, I'm dud in the way. But if he's going towards another Primark. I'm not swinging the Primark on him at first. I'm going to kill the rest of the squad and hope if I overkill the squad, then I put some wounds into him. And then yeah. the next round, I'll worry about him. And if I eliminate all the others, it doesn't matter if I'm going to challenge in the future. Because if everyone else is gone, all my attacks are allowed to go in. Yep, 100% agree. So, all right. Yeah. Um, the biggest low. threat is uh, Terminator Squad because they have fake stubborn. It's like, okay, you killed my sergeant 87 times. Still leadership eight. Yeah. Or a yeah. Primark spot where I'm fearless. I'm just well, going to hang out. Well, leadership six. Leadership six. Oh, no, no. Wait. Are stubborn. There's an inexorable. Ignore fear. Oh, oh they're stubborn. Not, uh, yep. uh, inexorable inexorable okay. is stubborn if everyone has it. Yeah. So okay. stubborn confers inexorable is soft stubborn, where it's if everyone has an inexorable, then you're essentially stubborn. Yeah. Okay. But even then, you might not necessarily lose the combat by that hard. Because if he's with a unit and you get attacks in, you're going to do damage to that. So it might not be that much of a loss if you're worried about losing. Yeah. It, it may not work out that way. Um, that and with those sad. kind of points, then you got to put another, if you're putting a unit with him, now you're looking at probably 850 points or so, realistically. That's almost a third of your army at 3,000 points in one unit. I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you and take out, hopefully, a bunch of those guys around you. Unless you want to stupefy, even then I'll still shoot you because it's like a feel no pain, and then, uh, you know, it, it's a big concentration that I can fire into them. All right, talk about Scaria. Where's Scaria? Is he yeah. just going to be D because he ain't Primark? No, no. Okay. No. All right. Remember how we were all saying like Emperor's Children? Man, I wish he would have changed the he changed the army, but it's like okay, uh, Scaria. Um, yeah. So real quick. Scaria is just a little side note. He is not actually a um, what should we call it? He's Primark. not actually a Primark at all. No. All right, so he does get affected by he. Well, he is. I think he's fearless actually, which is funny. Um, but he he's basically not a Primark. So 
certain he can't choose who he shoots at stuff like that. But anyway, so Scaria is three hundred sixty five points. Yep. So he is cheap, I and mean, he has no upgrades. So he's three sixty five normal. He is movement nine. Um. So he is actually quick. The quickest one without the jump pack. Weapon skill five. Ballistic skill five. Strength five. Toughness seven. Seven wounds. Initiative five. Four attacks. Leadership ten. Two up save. So actually kind of beefy. Um, he has, uh, let's go over the special rules first and then I'll go over the warrior special rules. Yeah. He's got adamantine will five up. Okay. He's got to feel like this, uh, normal save against psychic battlesmith three up, which means he's preparing shit on a three up mm. eternal warrior. So he's only ever taking one wound to turn from, from well, one, wound, one, one, one wound, wound per damage per damage. Um, fear two for some odd reason. So everyone around him is actually scared of him. He's a, he's hierarchy. a giant monster. Yeah. It's scary. Yes. Um, he's firing protocols three, so he can fire three things, and that's actually very interesting with his weapons. It will not die five up, so there's your... It's weird because he's got all the Primark rules, like it will not die. Move through cover, Patris Cybernetica, so he can join robots. Uh, Pride of Place, Rights of the Beast, those are special things. So he's got the Voidian Scepter, which is a special thing we'll talk about. Two Archaeotech pistols. So if I'm not mistaken, Steve, correct me on this, they're rending three up, strength six AP four? If I remember correctly? Steve? I believe you're correct. I know I know that yeah. the rending is very good on them. Yeah, rending three up is all that I really care about. Uh, photon thruster, this is strength six, AP two, blind, uh, with lance, apologies. Uh, the machina protectiva, that's special. Cortex control, you can join robots. Cyber familiar means he gets plus one to his invulnerable. And the machinator ray. So fun fact, machinator has a flamer and a melty gun. And it buffs his battlesmith to one plus. Now, I, I'm assuming ones always fail in this game. Yes. But that means you're repairing fail. stuff, uh, repairing robots on a two. I checked that because it might still work on ones. Yeah, this I is a weird one. That. I don't, and it's not fact. Which is, I know it's fact on him. Essentially, what's fact is he didn't have the stupid um, the Magos rule. So you could take him, an Arch Magos, and another Arch Magos. You, you can't do that with him anymore. He's yeah. an Arch Magos now. He used to be able to take a two Arch Magos. You can't do that anymore. So. Warlord trait. This is oh, my god. So to recap, robots cannot react unless you buff them some sort of way with cybernetica. Okay, that's that's the reason I'm bringing this up is is warlord trait. Any friendly units made up entirely of models with the automata unit type have at least one model within six inches of this warlord. By the way, he's on a hundred mil base. Uh, may make reactions ignoring the usual restriction on automata unit types. And you get an additional movement phase reaction. Yeah. So now you're <laughs> those robots that have really big guns and couldn't react to your fire, so you could fire at them freely. Now can react. Yeah. So don't shoot that photon thruster squad that now can shoot out eight to wait, no, not even eight. They go up to six. Twelve strength seven AP two shots. Um hitting on twos or threes. Don't don't don't. He he. This changes the army entirely. Just this mm. changes the army entirely because now your robots, which were very weak before, now can react. They can also do assault phase reactions, so on and so forth. Um, let's keep going. The Voidian Scepter. The Voidian Scepter is strength plus two, so he is swinging at strength seven. Yeah. AP two. Respectable. Two handed. Two handed. Armor bane. Exoshock four up. Murderous strike five up. So it's still the respectable. You like weapon. He's still carving through shit. Murder Strike 5 up is great. Exoshock 4 up, meaning that um, if you pet a vehicle on a 4 up, you do an automatic extra pet, and meaning that you get to roll the table again. An AP 2 would roll 6 is dead. Um, and then Rights of the Beast. <laughs> he has Artificia Machina, Artificia Cybernetica, Infirmer and Uh All are basically, he has all the rights. Yeah, he can do that everything. Arcana. You can do everything. This is kind of hard to talk about because, I mean, I'm not going to go over each no. artificial, obviously. But the reason it's so hard to talk about is because, holy crap, this changes how you play. Um, let's say your robot is hurt and there are about four wounds. You can literally repair that robot up to four wounds again easily with a Battlesmith roll and also Artificia, I believe, Machina. Oh, you want to do Artificia Cybernetica? Now that's a reaction from a robot because of his aura and a reaction from your unit or anyone you pick within range. Oh, there's a vehicle near you. There's your incursus. Use the weapons against them or do haywire. 
he is like your toolbox for the for what Mechanicum was missing. Okay. Um, he's also monstrous, but not that it matters. He's monstrous, by the way. Um, he doesn't have an unwieldy weapon, so it doesn't matter. He's also heavy, so he can't run, but he re-rolls that two up. Uh, and by the way, he's got a three up and vulnerable. I should point that out. The Machina Protectiva is a two up, four up, or four up and vulnerable. Uh, Cyber Familiar makes it, he's a two up, three up with toughness seven, seven wounds. Oh, and fun fact, uh, he can just repair vehicles next to him as well. Like, he's just insane. He's yeah. legitimately insane. Um, he used to be able to repair himself, which is also kind of funny. Speaking um, of the repairs, I checked one's will auto fail because it is one's will auto fail. So yeah. he's yep. battle smithing on a two up, whatever the hell he wants. Um, also, remember the machinator array, he does get what four attacks? He technically gets six because the machinator array adds two more attacks at strength six, AP two is shred. Unwieldy, but guess what? Oh, there's where monsters comes in. Guess what? You ignore unwieldy. So you're striking at initiative five. Um, That's he's, good. Yeah, he's actually now he wasn't as good as last edition. So sad for Dave. For, if you don't know last edition, his weapon used to do it was misworded. They faxed it like a month before 2.0 dropped. So, his weapon used to do D3 wounds to the unit. So that just means it was never intended. That was a mistake. Yeah, no. Okay. It was just funny that forever he would poke you four times, right? You didn't roll to wound. It would just do automatically D3 wounds to the unit. So you mm. could just do like 12 strength 7 AP2 wounds to the unit. It was an absolute dick bonkers. But you know, he, like, again, he's not a Primarch. He still has, what, the, it will not die. Can't, I mean, what does he not have as a Primarch? He can be adjusted and he, he can be adjusted play. and he doesn't cut his called shots. Yes, but he is fearless anyway because he's got the core. Like, that's about it. Yeah. He's close enough. So, where would you want to I mean, put him? Because this one's a little so, bit tough. We've been trying to talk yeah. more about the armies and things to do with them, but since they're such so, a weird choice, we'd almost have to go let, back through to me, get a deeper discussion. Uh, and not because I'm biased. I'm trying to be not biased, but I would actually put him in S. And there are multiple reasons why. Okay. His shooting is actually disgustingly good. He can shoot two Archaeotech pistols and a photon thruster. Or he can shoot a photon thruster, a Melta gun, and an Archaeotech pistol. He, that's already insane. He, he has a lot of AP2 shots, right? Now he can't pick where they're going, but they can do blind. They can rend. Um, the, melt about, the Melta gun can shoot stuff. The flamer. He can also have a flamer in the machinator. So, hey, whatever. You want extra shots. So shooting's really good. He can join robots and repair them multiple different ways, which is whether it's Cybernetica or uh, Battlesmith or whatever you want. Um, do they ever fact that you could Battlesmith if you if you get shot? I remember that was in the fact, and I that's can't not, remember. If it, that's not the thing. Because Battlesmith takes up a shooting attack. And I think they allowed it so you could Battlesmith when you get shot as a reaction. I know that's in the fact. I'll, I'll find it. Steve, if you could pull up the Mechanicum. Mechanicum fact? No, yeah. I refuse to legitimize I that. I think you I'll can take, I'll take a look. Yeah, I'll take a look because I remember Madonna. they talked about it because people were talking about battlesmithing when you got shot. I also is... don't have a laptop, so I. Oh, that's that is also true. Uh, true. That is also true. Um, he holds the phone honestly, and talks like, louder. Yeah. <laughs> so melee. So that was shooting. Okay. Well, melee, here we go. So. Oh, yeah. Does a model that has used the Battlesmith extra count as having made a shooting attack for the purpose uh, of gaining additional reaction from the logic of victory? No. Um, that's the only thing they FAQ'd. So, yes. You can absolutely, if you want to, I don't know why, but it'd be funny, you can Battlesmith a robot as you're getting shot. That's, I'm not sure when that would come into play. As you return fire? Yeah. Because remember, you do it first is the thing. Yes. You return first. So you're so, the robot before he dies, I guess. He says, question mark. Well, but they haven't shot yet. So if you're worried about them destroying it, I guess if you think they could just wouldn't be able to destroy it if it had one more wound. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I mean, you it's still can do it, which niche. is something. So. It's niche. It's funny. Melee. Now that was raged. Melee. He's absolutely insane. Maybe not a Primark killer, but he will absolutely wreck anyone who challenges him or just the unit in general. Again, Stre initiative 5, Strength 6, AP 2 is Shred. And also, Initiative 5, Strength 7, what, AP 2, Murder Strike. So, I don't know what's surviving that, but not a lot. Unless their weapon skill 6. Um, like, it, And then, on top of that, his Warlord trait and the fact that he can just buff anyone around him with as many cybernetic traits. He's, just, he's a toolbox, a melee monster, and an shooting monster. He's just not a Primark. Yeah. Um, 
I would put him in S for Mechanicum. Because the biggest problem we had with the robots was they could not react. He fixes that. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. One, I mean, if, if that's where you think he should yeah. go, obviously yeah. I want to defer to you at a point because you know it better. But a lot of that makes sense. And we put other people at S that weren't beating up other Primarchs. You know, that's just one facet. Can you fight well? He still fights well. Yeah. Okay, maybe he'll lose to a bunch of other Primarchs. But you know what? So does Lorgar. We put him up there. Like, that's not the end-all be-all, you know, to an extent. Um, okay. The Battlesmith thing. Yes. Did you find it? You could attempt to repair one of them. Sorry. If you're in base contact during the shooting phase. There you go. Can't do it. Um, During no. the shooting phase or your shooting phase? During... I hate you. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> I That's hate good. this. You don't want it to be true. And I agree. It's super weird. And I kind of want it to be true either. But they said the shooting phase. They didn't say yours. Oh, and again, if that. you're shooting a robot with two wounds, now he's got three. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, I remember what they fact. I remember what they fact. Yeah, I read it. Someone was asking if you could fire protocol in the reaction, and they said you could. So you could actually battle no, 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 and then you, cyber. You, no, yeah. they asked if you could fire the protocol battlesmith. But Battlesmith gives up shooting. Yes. All shooting. Yes. So all all two, shooting. There yes. it is. Guys. That, so that's the thing. Protocol, they're... One weapon into Battlesmith and then shoot the rest. No, no, no. It's either ah, you fire the okay. three protocol, all weapons, or you battlesmith. Or you battlesmith. Okay. Yes. So they, okay. I'm allowed. That's allowed. Hilarious, though. Absolutely yeah. hilarious. No, I'm... Um, all right. So... All right. So that gives us everything. We have quite a bit of, of, of things here. Let me. All right, so we have our list. Um, are we unhappy? Like, because it, it's been a bit since some of these. Are we unhappy with any of the spots where we did things where we're like, oh man, I remember we talked about that, and I feel that that was a really bad choice. I don't. I'm pretty happy with where we put things. I'm actually, pretty happy as well. Surprisingly, well, let's pretend I can't see it for a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, top to bottom, what does it look like? Oh god, now I gotta go through now. I gotta try to look at these tiny pictures. Let me expand these out so I can see them easier you myself. For your Primarchs. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing is because like so anyone doesn't know, I have an ultra wide, but I have so many different regions here, so I can have OBS on one side and our zoom here and this other thing here. And so my whole screen is taken up by everything. So I have to expand this window so I can see it. Because you see it pretty big. I see it very tiny. All right. So um let's start at the bottom. At the bottom, we have Ferris Manus, we have uh, Vulcan himself, and we have Snake Boy. Sitting yeah. at C, we have Sanguinius, we have... Um, uh, oh, sorry, which, where are we at there? Oh, sorry, we have Valdor as well, and we have uh, Mr. Two Axes hanging down there way at the bottom. In B... We have Rabute Gulliman. We have the non Snake Man. So we have regular old Fulgrim. We have the Khan sitting there with Mortarion, with Base Horus, as well as Korax. Sitting up at A, we have Dorn. We, oh, my apologies. B was the lion. I think I said it was Rabute. My apologies. That's the lion there. Rabute, uh, Mr. Fancy Pants is up in A, as well as old One Eye. When you get to S, now we got everyone who's left, including Scaria there. We just talked about how Faria should sit there. We also put Lorgar up there. We put Kurz up there because he's absolutely amazing. Uh, Russ, who is probably the best Primark destroyer in the game, and then Perturabo. So we have as much S as we do B. Everyone else is sitting at threes. Um, overall, I'm I'm happy with where we where we put everything. I think it fits quite well. I mean, there can be arguments made that it's just people, but I think it gives us an idea overall. Um, when the FAQ drops and you can no longer summon demons as a reaction, Lorgar <laughs> is going to go down to, to D. B. Yeah. I say no, C. I'll give him B. I'll give him B. No, he's only he because was... the Ruin Storm list is solid. Yes. Um. To me, that was probably what put him in S, but I think he'd almost still be super high up without that. I didn't even think of that in the beginning. It was all the other stuff he did because he does so much for their army. 
It's not that he makes their army S tier. It's that he does such improvements to the army that he really buffs them. And he's pretty good himself. The irony is we were waiting. For, we all said, you know, we'll wait for the demons, you know, to, to drop, see what he does then. Because I remember when we read this, we were like, oh, everything's about demons. and stuff. What does he do? He did so, a lot without demons, though. Demons yeah. helped put him over the fence. But he was up there without it, honestly, in my mind. Without those demon uh -huh. stuff, he still does a lot, a lot of good. Um, all right. Um, I think that does it for us tonight because also it's getting super late because we started this very late and we thought this would be very, very fast and it was not fast at all because um, we did Lord Guard in like 30, 30 minutes. What? Psychic powers. It's always the psychic powers. Yeah. Lord Guard took like legitimately 30 sun. minutes. All right. Well, um, thank you for everyone who does listen, watches, anything like that. Remember, we put all this out in every podcatcher as well as YouTube. If you want to see this chart and all, all that's all over YouTube, we'll have it there so you can take a look. Uh, podcatcher is a little bit tougher to put out, but this will be on our on our Facebook. I'll make sure it goes up. It'll be on our Discord server, all those sort of spots. So you can find all that. I'll just make sure it goes up a little bit after we put this out to not do spoilers for it. Um, so for other things you're getting from us this week, I have a few personal things I have going on later in the week. And then there's also PAX this weekend. And I know the other two guys, I think, have some event type stuff they're doing as well. So we have some stuff coming up. You'll hopefully get at least one more thing. You should be seeing this on a Wednesday. I'm hoping to get at least one more video out, but unfortunately, no promises. Like I said, I have some stuff that's going to take me out of commission starting Thursday through Sunday. Um, if not, you will be getting some content uh, discussing PAX when I'm back from it. Um, probably some board game related stuff because that's what I go to PAX for. And then from here, the goal is we're going to also go back through and do this with special characters. There's just a whole, whole lot of them. So I don't even know how many episodes that's going to take. That's going to take a very long time. Um, I also have like the, the next part for Conquest I'm putting out hopefully soon. Um, we have at least one battle report recording in about two weeks, hopefully some other um, things as well. And then once we get Imperialis in our hands, we will be recording some stuff related to all of that. Um, there'll be some battle reports, but I might try to do some stuff related to as I work on it as well. We'll, we'll see in which ways I'm motivated to make some stuff like that as well, or if Dan is. Um, all right nothing else i think for the moment if you don't if you haven't subscribed yet please do i said we have uh i want to say we're about 40 percent of the people who watch this subscribe if everyone else did boom we would have giant numbers you know the next day so if you haven't done it yet hopefully we keep giving you enough reasons to keep coming on back all right um otherwise then on behalf of everyone here at the show has a good hobbying and some great gaming